Welcome to Baboonmas! Merry Baboonmas, everybody! How do you like that overlay? I've, I've made us a little advent calendar of... <laughs> of characters. Uh, yeah, wel oh, yeah, welcome in, everyone. Uh, it is the most festive time of the year. It is... it's Baboonmas. Uh, I mean, it's self-explanatory. No one needs to explain Baboonmas. It's baboons. No? Yeah, it's great. Um, that's everything I'm going to say, because I'm not running this game. The marvellous Aaron Brioche, to the right... Uh, on the screen, the the larger square. Why does the larger square simply not uh, TPK the smallest characters? Uh, is Bri? <laughs> Don't say yeah, TPK the had, tallest was... characters. I've got two feet. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> We've all got. I two mean, feet. he 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 was saying, why doesn't the largest um square not devour the other squares? Because he know it, he knows I'd do it given the opportunity. We, of course, begin in um, the uh, city of Karaki, recently split from um, the large city of Karaki after a brutal civil war ten years ago, home to the Guild of Icons. It's uh, it's time for the Worcester festivities to begin. It's uh, just before Baboonmas. A layer of uh, crisp snow is falling on the streets, and it's very enthusiastically and quickly being shoveled by two figures. Um, hey, uh... Actually, Winter in Atos is known as Fallow. Nerd! <laughs> 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 okay, you can have inspiration because you're all right. We've been doing this campaign for three years and I don't remember any of the lore. Me neither. <laughs> to be fair, the seasons may have only existed for two years. <laughs> sure. I plan things. <laughs> okay, so uh, two figures are shoveling snow uh, enthusiastically and cheerfully, but they're not uh, they're not as much as looking at one another. One is a um, tall orange tiefling uh, wearing a cloak for a bit of extra warmth. The other is a uh, blonde cleric swallowed in her winter vestment. And we're going to um, hand forward a bit, and what's happened is the um, basically the merchant guilds have all banded together, supported by the High Council, and they sorry the High Parliament, and they've constructed a giant straw baboon. Which of the twelve baboons of um, Father Baboonus? Is it? Not really sure. It's just a baboon. <laughs> a large These straw baboon. Together. I thought Aya was trying to work on disbanding unions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A large, flammable baboon. And guess what? It's on fire. <laughs> oh no! <Mom. laughs> That yep. doesn't take long. Burn the goat. Burn the goat. We would like to point out that the um, Guild of Icons and the Atos uh, campaigns do not support the cool crime, crime of goat burning. No, they absolutely do. Okay. No, sorry, they Keith. don't. It's just Keith. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, don't get him deported. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, yep. Uh, first of all, of course... Um, in this uh, cold is a um, humanoid mushroom person. Pixel, would you like to tell us what Capulus is doing? Capulid and what is... she looks like, for those who don't know yet. Well, Capulid is a two-foot-tall mushroom humanoid uh, with a stinkhorn cap that is quite reminiscent of hair. Uh, usually just has uh, 
cream white skin made of mycelium, uh, but now that the cold weather has come in, uh, has fur uh, kind of around her body in the shape of a coat. Uh, and of course, she is wearing a blue sash with a cloud badge on it, a symbol of the cult of Petricor. And she is currently sat atop the shoulders of probably a bemused tiefling. Yep, uh, you're sat on the shoulders of a uh, one uh, V uh, Clatcher, a young tiefling that who lives in the sewers with their parents, and they are currently out shopping for baboomus food. They uh, pray, they sort of look upwards, even though they couldn't possibly see through the back of their own head and say Cobb I appreciate you joining me on this hunt but it's a solitary activity you can go about your own routine if you wish my routine is making sure that you don't do anything to harm Petricor look you can just say we're friends she doesn't say anything just crosses <laughs> her arms <laughs> Yep. So yep, V uh, basically carries you around the markets, gathering produce. Uh, you're sh soon joined on their back by a large haversack full of, um, you know, all the traditional uh, baboomus foods. Um, I don't. Potato. Please explain them in great detail. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so there's potatoes, probably some sort of large fowl. Just potatoes. Uh, <laughs> that classic yeah. baboomus meal. <laughs> Baboon yeah, myth in flexible. Ireland got really dark for a few years. <laughs> oh, no. oh, my oh my god. god. <laughs> I would like to point out Pixel is Irish and he's allowed to say that. <laughs> <laughs> but yep, uh they're uh, they're just looking over some um very large, tasty looking uh, steak mushrooms when something feels a bit off. You look you uh, suddenly notice the uh, price late. Like, you see, uh, there's a small sign on the store selling these mushrooms. Feel free to comment. Uh, which um, has the date they were picked. And you could have sworn it suddenly, for a second, hopped from um, today to the day after tomorrow. The box mucks day. Oh, damn it. <laughs> it's Oxen Day, which is the day, of course, of Oxen. <laughs> of course. Cap Capula's going to rub her eyes with her fists and then look again at the sign. It, and you're back to Baboon Miss Eve. Mm. Behind you, a bright orange tiefling and a cleric move pa uh, a shoveling snow at a rapid pace. Yeah. They're both clearly very strong, and they're lifting huge amounts of snow at once. In fact, you actually have to duck as a small spray. Well, you don't have to duck because uh, Fee activates their cloak, which billows and blocks it. They turn and fix um, the orange tiefling a glare before going back, turning back to the cellar. Do you so like to do anything? Why do you need to buy so much food? It's simple. In this cold winter, this harsh winter, we must stay together. And what brings people together is a good meal. I'm going to help my dad cook it. Isn't that great? Uh, you're welcome to come as well, Capula. I'm going to invite everyone. I'm going to invite Morgan. I'm going to invite... Inotrare. Oh yes, this Morgan character who totally exists. <laughs> he does totally exist. I've spoken to him, and it's Teddy. Yes, I know you speak to stuffed animals. <laughs> Not so loud. So what's this baboon miss thing anyway? Hmm? Oh, everyone knows that. It's, uh, it's baboons. Could you specify a tad bit more? Baboons? Ah... <sighs> Look, uh, you tell her, they say to the uh, 
seller on the market. A earlier well-dressed gentleman. Oh yes, uh, of course everyone knows the true meaning of baboons is baboons, young lady. <laughs> he uh, says, looking at Capulet. If he looks at Capulet, Capulet is going to just uh, duck a bit behind Fee's head because this person is selling mushrooms. <laughs> oh, there's no need to be afraid. These mushrooms are as fresh as fresh can be, and they were picked tomorrow. Hmm? Why'd I say that? Happy well, back they, were time. Picked. they were picked today. Uh, for a second, you see the sign flicker, and it once again uh, says, um, Boxing Day. Hmm. Draw me perception. I'll do that right now with my perception step that I totally remember. Perception is wisdom. That's plus two. That is 19. Yep, that'll do it. Uh, all of a sudden, uh, you see a massive column of smoke and a warm uh, sort of... Um, yeah, well, it's a column of smoke. There's a warm glow coming below it and you realize something very large is just set on fire you um only have, really have a minute moment to consider this when there's a huge there's a massive cracking noise uh i'm going to hop my feet up onto fee's shoulders and then use fee as a launching point to jump onto the roof of the shop okay I'm gonna say. Do you want With to the jump spell always active. Okay. Yep. You can probably just jump then. As you jump, uh, you realise something a bit odd. He uh, has a very notably uh, sort of slightly green skin, and their hair is purple and green, and sort of sort of curled braided into the shape of flowers. But all of a sudden, as you look down to jump, it's, uh, you see nothing but grayscale. Like grayscale material or grayscale? Oh, grayscale as in there's no color. Ah. Huh. Yeah, as you land on the roof of the stool, you look around and pretty much everything seems to have frozen. With the exception of um, the uh, orange tiefling and the blonde cleric, who are just moving at such a rapid pace, they uh, don't seem to have lost any momentum. Although they're moving significantly slower now. Uh, so we're canonically establishing that uh, Grounded and Hannah are immune to time stop. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, that's not Hannah. Just to clarify. It's kind of weird those two are together, considering one of them hates the other's guts. Why do you think they're not talking? <laughs> Good point. <laughs> right, well, Capulet is going to look around at the amazing visual of all of the snow frozen in place as it was falling. Yep. Uh, this and tremendous look... sight that you'll all have to imagine. Yep. You, in fact, you look at the snow. You see an individual snowflake. It doesn't actually look as uh, unique as you'd think because. It looks kind of blurry. All of a sudden, you realise that several the area in front of you is just sort of start turned into a slight cloud, and there's a just a flash of light around the edges of the blurred area, and with a loud crack, a portal opens, and we're going to cut there. From, well, we're going to cut from there to the far north. Where, Mr. Blue? I believe you've got a pirate to describe to us. Oh boy. So, uh, Nigel, uh, pirate, he's wearing a standard pirate attire, a gold rim, tricorn hat, he's got a little black stitch, cloud and feather pattern. He stands at about six and a half feet tall, face covered by a one-eyed alabaster mask, and... He has shoulder-length rows of curled crimson hair that almost seem to glow. 
Ignore the barking dog in the background. He has a barking no, we dog. We can't. <laughs> Apologies. He wears a. Uh... You can have inspiration okay. for the dog. Okay. <laughs> I approve. Dog inspiration. Where's a yeah. uh, black and gold patterned buccaneer coat with an ankle length coat tail and inside his leather vest, they're all uh, burnished gold buttons and his ensemble is finished by a pair of brown leather cavalier boots and brown leather layered forearm length gloves. Wherever you would see skin, you instead see it covered by some sort of dense black fabric. Lovely stuff. And presumably he's in the city of Airedale, so sorry, the town of Airedale somewhere. Ambitious. Yep, Airedale in the pub, drinking and possibly fighting someone just for the hell of it. Yep. In fact, um, uh, who would you say you're fighting? Anyone in particular? No, just whoever looked like they were up for a fight. Is that's how you okay. make friends by punching them? Okay, yeah, I'm gonna say then you're fighting a fairly uh, sort of yep, yeah, a fairly cheerful uh, sort of half elf woman. She goes by Spring. She's got a short sword that she's trying to fence you with, although she's not. She seems like she's tried training with it, but not necessarily much experience using it. Uh, in fact, roll me, just give me a straight attack roll. And we'll see how well this fight's going for you. Uh, yeah, sure. Am I using the 10 or the 3? Level 10 or level 3? Oh, uh, you're level 3 at the moment. Yeah. Mm, uh, 10. 10, did you say? To attack. Yep, 10 to attack. Well, I rolled an attack roll too, and I rolled an 8, so... It would uh, presumably you've both had a bit, a bit to drink already, and you're not really trying to hurt each other. So, see, she, she sort of half-heartedly tries to slash at you, but uh, you see it coming and um, flamboyantly repost with my mace. With your mace. Yeah. And uh... her, um, yep, her sword, her sword, which she wasn't holding on particularly uh, tightly, uh, gets knocked out of her hand. And she um, smiles, curtsies, and says, Okay, best of uh, three. I was just deciding to what voice to use, but I don't have one at the moment, so I'm just going to talk as myself. Uh, yeah, best of three, that should do it. And, okay, uh, okay. Who's her body uh, yep. a drink? Sounds good, sounds good. Okay, yeah. roll me another attack, please. Yeah. I wanted to see if I could do a dexterity check to see if I could catch the sword as it was knocked out of their hand. And just like hand it no, back that... to them, but... Uh, actually, yeah, give me an acrobatics check to do that, because that sounds cool. Yay. 19. Yeah, that'll do it. Yep, you just catch the sword, and um, as she's saying, the, as she's uh, saying best of three, uh, you uh, just sort of hand the sword to her. Me. Okay then. Auto attack again. 16 this time. Okay, she's rolled a 21. So uh, as you roll to attack, she expertly dodges to the side and just holds her sword to your throat. Okay. Looks like I won this one. That you did. Good job. So, who does that make the victor? Well, we're even, so one more right. Sounds good. Yep. A, a tiefling and a human on a nearby table sort of cheer as she um, manages to beat you. Okay, and if you'd like uh, to give me a... And I give a hearty laugh and say, she hasn't won yet. It is she, right? She, yeah. And, uh, third attack? Yep, roll away. Fourteen. Okay. She rolls, uh, rolled an eighteen, I'm afraid. Mm. 
And... Yep. And all of a sudden, uh, you find yourself holding her sword. And you hear her say, best of three. Wait, um... Didn't we already do this? Yeah, hey, looks like I won. Hmm. Well, be buying you a drink. What do you have? Hmm. Oh, just a glass of elven wine. Sounds good. And you buy I... my sister's anything? Why not? Round for everyone who wants. And I'll just yep. slap some coins on the counter and say around for everyone. Yep, the entire meet all cheers except for the uh, for a um, very grumpy looking tiefling at the bar all of a sudden um, as you put your coin down smoke seems to rise from the bar oh who set the bar on fire it wasn't me this time uh, everything feels oddly quiet so just other sounds of the patrons just gone Yep, all the uh, no ambient sounds, nothing. And as you look up, everything's gone grey. What in the name of Morian? The smoke uh, keeps flowing out of the uh, bar, and then suddenly, there's a sort of an electric flow around the edges, and uh, the smoke sort of uh, it's like a cloudy water clearing up somehow. And you see images of a uh, city covered in snow. Somewhere far to the south, you'd guess, based on how it looks. D definitely nothing like anything uh, you've seen up north. All of a sudden, there's a massive flash of light. And then we're going to cut from um, Atos itself to um, another dimension in the multiverse. Several miles above the ground in an airship called The Grounded. We have a cobalt and a human. Which would you like to, which of you would like to introduce yourselves first? I'll go first. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm playing uh, Knuckle. He's as big and as wide as a barn door uh, and about as intelligent. He is a rogue by birth, um, but a fighter by uh, reputation. Uh, though he claims to be a wizard. And, uh, yeah, he works for an investigative team uh, alongside his uh, good friend, uh, good friend Glek, uh, his <laughs> familiar Lalila, uh, and his captain, the Sarge. Also, he talks like this. Get used to it. That's him. Okay. Yep. And if you'd like to describe Glek and this. Uh, small, scaly, has a tail. Um, and a fondness for things that go bang. <laughs> uh, mostly the gun, but also bombs and other, other such uh, crafty um, items. Um, yeah, that that is ninety percent of Gleck. Uh You will find that if Gleg is doing something Gleg is proficient in, then Gleg is the best at it. Um, but they know what they're not good at, and will off that to other people. <laughs> Delegation, bro. Um. Uh, either the bravest person in the room or a complete coward, depending on how close they are to the danger. <laughs> <laughs> they will call out to be saved if they're stuck in a straight fight. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Glek and Knuckle, what you doing? Hmm. We're out looking for presents and, and look like nice gifts for the Sarge, because Sarge has put up with a lot over the last year or so. And so we thought, you know, we'd, we'd do right by him and get him something nice. Of course, I have no intention of paying for it. <laughs> I like to think oh, yeah. playing this to Glack. Is, is not a gift if you pay for it, no? Exactly, Glack. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm peckish, so, though, yeah. so if you see rat on a stick anywhere, let me know. Does this setting hat? Yeah, the setting, of course, has a um, its own winter holiday called Smaboombus. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and of course you're um, well, uh, you aren't even sure what the name of this town is. You just stop by in the nearest town just to resupply and you thought it was the perfect time to slip out and do some gift shopping. 
quote, t- quotation marks inserted where appropriate. <laughs> so, uh, you find yourself in a busy market. There's a pleasant layer of snow. What would you like to do? Do you reckon he might like this candle? And I point at just an ordinary candle. <laughs> if there's one thing I know about Sarge, it's that he likes being able to see. Yeah, that is very true. Um, Black was thinking he like his stick. We could get him fancier stick. Oh, I fa- oh, I like that. What about this? And I grab a tree. <laughs> okay. <laughs> While Knuckle is grabbing the tree, could you both give me a perception check, please? <laughs> oh god, is this using our old sheets or new ones? Using Pathfinder, yeah. <laughs> Christ! Hold yeah. on, I need to open roll 20. <laughs> don't worry, I'll be setting this per um, path on the character. So... No, no, uh, don't. Use a, use a Dungeons & Dragons DC, it'll be a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sorry, can we you use Gavin C to pass it? <laughs> Okay, uh, okay, hold okay, up, I'm doing okay. maths. Okay. 32. I got... <laughs> I actually rolled it in roll 20, just to be sure. 22. Okay. Uh, Knuckle, you can't. Ju- you just can't shake the feeling. Something feels a bit odd. Oh Maybe God, you're not what are you expect- feeling about this? What do you think, Lali La? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, in fact, um, Lali La's familiar weight seems to have disappeared. You might be somewhere you didn't expect to be. Uh, Glek, you uh, just realised you and Knuckles seem to have walked through some sort of huge glowing portal with crackling lightning around the outside. It's actually quite strange you didn't see it before, but maybe it just materialised. (laughs) (laughs) My God. Lolly La. This is... Glek, can you see if Lolly La's on my back? I can't feel her weight. Good, good. I climb up to where Lalila would be. <laughs> okay. There was no Lalila. <laughs> okay. Uh, there is, in fact, but. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she is now. Uh, a with rat. a loud. <laughs> with Actual. a loud clap. <laughs> <laughs> with a loud crack, uh, you uh, hear um, the portal dissipate, and it actually occurs to you the area around you is quite grey. Oh, that's just typical, isn't it? Pools will be closed the moment you walk through them. They never stay open long enough. They're right, quite fact, rude, yes. Yeah. It must in be fact, on shorter bab- baboonness hours. Shmaboonness. Shmaboonness. <laughs> yeah, that. Shmabble-babble. One of them. Would you be celebrated once a year? Shmabba Babble World? <laughs> hey! <laughs> it's like the idea that portals work on uh, shorter holiday hours. Mm. Glek, what, uh, fact... what can you see with your dragon eyes? <laughs> I Glek. stand on, on Knuckle's shoulders and just look okay. as far as I can. <laughs> okay, so Glek, uh, you only see three moving objects in this area. Which is, as I have previously stated, become very monochrome. A bright orange tiefling, you think, and a blonde figure in a sort of clerical vestment, who are both shoveling snow, kind of slowly, but they're shoveling it. And a uh, some sort of mushroom appears to be bouncing on top of a uh, stall nearby. Mm. All we can, we, yeah, yeah, Black has suddenly idea for 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 person. Um, good captain likes non meat foods. Yes. Um, we get him exotic mushroom and and make him exotic omelet. Don't you need eggs for that? Hmm. No, yeah, we can get eggs. Eggs is easy. <laughs> All right, we'll get, get some eggs and then we'll cook that mushroom. <laughs> oh, you want perception? Uh, yep, from uh, Capulet, please. Ah, oh, yes. from Capulet. <laughs> uh, five. Uh, you're still transfixed by a slowly growing portal, Capulet, and don't hear a thing. Uh, so, uh, Glek, Capulet, and Knuckle. 
all of a sudden there's a bright flash and a um well a pirate dressed in all black with long red hair falls through another no! portal I'm gonna die for the mushroom lest someone try and take it from us <laughs> oh my god like the bodyguard uh, <laughs> slow motion <laughs> okay we'll make this a grapple check please so um knuckle I'm please just... roll me athletics capulet please using roll me athletics 5e? <laughs> not uh, yeah 5e anymore. rules damn yeah, shame you, you're <laughs> using your uh, level 10 fifth edition sheets now or your a 5 15 sheets. to athletics so. oh yeah. so we're Capulet. using level 10 now yeah yeah uh please roll me um athletics or um deck oh, sorry what am i saying a athletics or acrobatics to avoid the grapple i'm going to do acrobatics because that's at least a plus zero as opposed to a minus two that's a natural 20. oh see what I get. I'm just double checking if I get anything from being a rune knight. Um, <laughs> sweet. I won't do that yet, though, because that's a limited thing, but uh, eventually I can. Um, it's kind of like being a Fortnite. Let's roll. Plus nine. Let's see what I get. Ah, oh, that's a two. Plus nine is eleven. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Knuckle, uh, you jump forward with your uh, huge, meaty hat arms, but... um. Yep, the uh, mushroom girl just definitely hops, you know, sort of cartoonishly bounces off the uh, top of the uh, stool. Uh, where are you trying to land, Capulet? Uh, sure, break the fall a bit, land on the frozen fee, and then hop onto the ground. Okay, so you bounce off your friend, question mark, and land on the ground. Uh, you're basically sat right next to a very confused looking uh, pirate. How would you like to? How would you react to this, uh, Nigel? I keep forgetting how to pronounce that. Is it just Nigel, pronounced right? like not? Okay, Nigel. it's just Nigel. Okay. Does he say smashing? smashing. <laughs> <laughs> We're both getting well, our inspiration from <laughs> Where the That's hell am I? And who the hell are you? I could ask you the same question. Last thing I know, I was fighting in a bar, and now I'm wherever the hell this is. Did you lot do this? I have no idea what's going on. But look at those up there, and Capula points to the rude knight who just failed to grab her. Oh, yep. Yeah. Did uh, Gleck, was Gleck riding on uh, Knuckle at the time, or are they doing I'm something else? I'm assuming Gleck wasn't holding on, so Gleck probably fell off when the dive happened. <laughs> okay. So Gleck, you're uh, a few meters away, presumably uh, lying down on the snow, not unlike our pirate. Are you, doing, <laughs> are you approaching the group, or are you doing something else? I will indeed approach the group. Um, a little bit surprised at the mushroom sword. <laughs> Yeah, what size is Gluck? Oh, uh, four foot something. Okay, Capulet's two feet, exactly. <laughs> I think Gluck is very surprised that that, that little tiny plant is, is very well spoken. Hmm. So, what are you? Yes, I just said. No. Oh what? Oh, what, what are you? Are I, you? I, I did not hear that at all. I, 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 I am, I am Gleck, the mightiest of dragons. Yes. You don't look like a dragon. What? What? What does? What does? What does tiny speaking thing mean? Uh, Capulet uh, paces around Gleck and checks uh, his back for wings. Oh, just to be clear, Gleck oh. uses they them pronouns. Okay, checks their back for wings. <laughs> Does Capulet mention it at all? No, just paces around and takes in all of Gleck's form. Mm-hmm. Gleck kind of uh, like proper straightens up their pot posture, um, puts their like fists on their hips, and just kind of. To kind of mix, tries to make themselves look a little bit larger. It is not very successful. 
I mean, it's successful uh, to Capulet. You've got a salty feet on her. <laughs> uh, Glek, roll me intimidation. We'll just see how this goes. I just need to check. I'm using the 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 D and D one for this, aren't I? Which means I can get yeah. a bonus. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to double check my features. I have so many. Uh, Capulet, I'll let you, let you decide. You can either sort of um, decide how your character would respond to the role, resulting role. I'll give you some guidelines, or you can uh, try and do an opposed role. Uh, is Glack Four. specifically trying to intimidate? Glack is trying to appear as impressive as possible. Yeah, I will call that intimidation for mechanical reasons. Well, if it's intimidation, I could do a contested roll. Yep. You only have to beat a four. <laughs> okay. Uh, um... Let's call it. Uh, we'll call that insights to oppose. Okay. Uh, bu -bu That's 17. Yep. And did you say you rolled a four, Glek? Yep. Yeah, they still don't look not much like a dragon capulet. <laughs> You're not fooling anyone. I mean, you do. You probably are aware that uh, kobolds are certain draconic in nature, but um, you know, a true uh, dragon in all its uh, splendor, Lek isn't is not yet. <laughs> I mean, Capula probably doesn't even know about kobolds, but Capula certainly heard stories about dragons and <laughs> oh, yeah. doesn't line up. And the dungeons that they live there in. Like, like there's not trying to fool anyone. These, these, these make no sense. You are a very strange, small thing. Yeah. Okay, I think Capula already has inspiration, is that right? Uh, yes. Use it or use, lose it, tragically. But Glek now has inspiration. Hooray! Uh... All right, well, Capulet is going to point to Knuckle on the roof. Just like, is that your friend? Oh, yes, yes, yes. This is Knuckle. Uh, Knuckle is, 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 is a mighty wizard. All right, Capulet is going to hop onto the shoulder of Nigel and just be like, be careful. That one on the roof tried to attack me. <laughs> Oh, could anyone help me down here? <laughs> uh, Knuckle, give me an acrobatics check to get down, and <laughs> while we'll uh, find out how Nigel responds. Six. Can I? I was I was gonna say if I ask if I could guide him down. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, take back, seize. Yeah. I'm gonna no. roll. Uh, <laughs> Knuckle, luckily the snow. Breaks your fall, so I'll say the damage is halved, but you take... Good thing I landed on my face. Yeah, one point of bludgeoning damage as you oh, uh, face no. palm into the snow. I now have 69 <laughs> hit points. Nice. nice. Okay. So, yeah, um, Nigel, a mushroom proposed an alliance. What do you... I'm very confused. I don't know who any of these people are, so I'll just nod and just stay cautious because I have no idea what's going on. Well, as the uh, pirate nods, uh, you all hear a massive crackling noise. Ah. Uh, anyone who wants to can roll me perception, please. Uh, uh, I'd love to roll me again. <laughs> wow. Wasting it all. 15 for Knuckle. Only a natural 18, but it does make for a total of 29. Wow. And I rolled so okay. low, I am going to mention it. <laughs> I will emphasize for anyone not keeping track at home that a 30 in, um, a DC of 30 in 5th edition D&D represents something that's technically speaking impossible. But yeah, I digress. Uh, anyone who rolled above a 10 uh, will see that um, the... Um, blowing plume of smoke nearby has um, suddenly started moving again and it just sort of feels like there's a massive pulsing wave coming off it Capula can just feel that Nigel isn't looking at it and like puts a hand on top of his head and turns it towards the cliff 
How do you react to this, Nigel? What the bloody hell is that? Okay. Um, anyone who rolled above a 15, you see a small mote of light. It's just, it's hard to see. But it's clear, it's, uh, you know, it's quite bright and it's just moving about. And after a couple of seconds, it sort of stops and as if reacting towards you, approaches. It begins emitting smoke, uh, forming a small cloud. Lightning crackles around the edge of the cloud, which suddenly focuses. And through uh, these, this newly opened portal, you see uh, the face of a strange looking mechanical creature. Greetings from the plane of Mechanicus. We have uh, discovered that the material plane is, exper is experiencing issues. Please stand by. <laughs> I should have brought blades what? into this. But... <laughs> <laughs> would would Le and Knuckle recognize this as being as something similar to um, things that we've met before from the Pathfinder yeah. plane floor? <laughs> yeah, you are. Uh, in fact, these are pretty much the in, f in fact, I'm going to say you probably have the same plane of sort of you know, lawful, neutral, mechanical beings. Those adjoining. are the calculators who kidnapped Sarge. Yes, yes. It was shortly before um, before Grounded was allowed to think for herself, yes? Yes. Capulet's just looking at Knocker like, oh, so you know what kidnapping is? What? Uh, yeah, I've done it before. Give me, uh, give me a history check, Capulet. Uh, history. What am I for history? Probably a minus one. I'm not too good at kidnapping, though. That is a two minus one. They keep getting away. They kick pretty hard, you know, goats. Mm. <laughs> yeah, the name uh, Grounded means nothing to you. But this would have been very funny if I was here. <laughs> okay. If possible, please help us reboot the universe. It would appear an unknown event, perhaps triggered by the destruction of a primate effigy. It says, looking uh, as close as it, its mechanical face can get to uh, be mused, looking at some notes, has caused time and space to shatter. Are you telling me a prime ate this effigy? <laughs> how Contrary to popular belief, there is no prime universe. So no. Capulet is going to hop in front of the creature, and it's like, "You came from a portal of clouds. Did Petrichor send you?" If it would expedite this conversation, I will say yes. <laughs> Did Capulet. you wish to speak, Kobold? <laughs> Capula kind of stands firm and then gives a salute. <laughs> ah. Black thinks the saving universe would be a very good present for good captains, so Black will help. You reckon you reckon Sarge will like that then? Well right then. Count me in and count Lali La in as well. Isn't that right, Lali La? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Lala has crawled up to his shoulder because it, it turns out you can communicate with your familiar, so he just thinks everyone can hear Lali La now. Okay, who is yep, I a guess rattling so. and would ordinarily be able to speak common, but he just thinks <laughs> that that's what's happening now. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah, Lali La says some uh, mutters something in your ear about what she's going to do when she's humanoid again. Well, that's oddly violent, Lalila. La. Lalila is always violent. What do you mean? Very good point. Very good point, Lek. While we're out you looking for presents... You should find something for Lalila to explode. I was thinking, what if we got a nice little pink bow? <laughs> do you reckon she'd <laughs> like that? I'd look at the map. I look at Knuckle. 
I grin. Yes. Lally Lamb and pink bows. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Knuckles gonna die. <laughs> Maybe it's for the best Iris had to skip this session. <laughs> I'd been okay. in private discussions with Iris. Iris was going to voice Lali La, my familiar rat, for the entire session. Aww. It's a shame. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure I could get through the session with a headache. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's yeah. true. Yeah. I mean, it's a shame she had a headache. Oh, anyway, um... N are Nigel or um, Capulet doing anything? Uh, Capulet is awaiting orders. If you wish to help solve this, resolve this situation, we can send you to the point at which it may have began. The effigy in question is composed of straw from the far north. You may be able to discover some sort of anomaly. Capulet is going to nod. I will take uh, this it, nod as the affirmative in common. Uh, the, this this modron, I assume, uh, mentioned that the effigy would have been. Did they say burned or did it say destroyed? Uh, I can't remember what wording I used, but def, uh, but either yeah, burnt applies. Yes. Um, then I will look for, for I'll look for the smoke. Just but the smoke, this fire. Uh, you see the same plume of smoke you've been seeing the entire time. Gleck, you literally know how to make smoke bombs where there is no fire. Yes, yes, I can do this. That That is that is not point. <laughs> well, all I'm saying is where there's smoke is not necessarily fire. You <laughs> Gleck thinks that alchemy stuff should be left to Gleck? And wizard stuff be left to wizard, yes? And so if I made a fog a cloud... <laughs> <laughs> fog is not smoke! That is a good point, that is a good point. You reminded me that last time I ate beans. <laughs> Lali last squeaks in anger. Well, right, Lali. Okay, technically it was a bad time. And yes, it rotted several of the parts the on beans. the ground. But... All I'm going to say is that, you know, it turned out all right, didn't it, Lalila? -la? I paid you back for the bits I broke off the ship, and I apologise to Grounded. Well, yes, all right, it didn't go so well, but I'm still working on it. Yes, all right, I'm working on it. Cool. <laughs> She's quite upset on that one, isn't she, everyone? I think we just glares at you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Nigel, do you have any thoughts on this um, mission you've been offered? Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at the... If I understand, robot standing in a floating portal? Yeah, basically. Um, Modron's uh, basically like a... Sort of like a geometric shape with arms. Like There are other sort of... Um, well, there are more powerful sort of... Um, mechanical sort of beings... Yeah, I think, are they inevitables? No, inevitables are the specific ones. Would I recognize them as some sort of robot, I guess? Yeah, I'd say so. They definitely look, look like some sort of mechanical entity. You, Hanker, are you why I'm suddenly not in the pub? Indeed. It appears when time and space broke, individuals were pulled from other times and places and in at least one case, a parallel world, although it takes an impressive lack of sense of direction to walk through a portal without noticing. Bravo. Thank you, I do uh, my best. <laughs> and if we solve this little issue, I can go back to the pub and finish my night. Indeed, we will indeed make it, as uh, beings of the material plane say, worth your while with a gift, as is traditional for Baboonus. I do apologise. Claboonus. It says to Knuckle and Sleck. Oh, now I know what you mean, yes. <laughs> that make much more sense, yes. <laughs> I don't know what any of that means, but if we can get this done so I can be on with my night, then so be it. Excellent. Please proceed through this portal. It will take you to a place far north, Several months ago, when the straw that was um, used in the composition of the 
by a mate was harvested. And, yep, as they say, uh, another portal opens and it's, um, it looks quite familiar to you, Nigel. Although you, maybe you don't recognise the specific place, but yep, this is somewhere in um, the uh, region of Norton Park. You're stepping through the portal? Yes. I just want yes. to get the night over with, so yes. I was told there would be presents, so yes. <laughs> Cappy hey. looks at Nigel. You know, you should be glad to serve Petrical. Okay. <laughs> As you all walk through the portal. I serve more. Uh, thank you. Yeah. <gasps> Religious schism. <laughs> yeah. As you all walk through the portal, uh, the orange tiefling um, suddenly um, is uh, so, sort of, while well, the camera sort of pans and the orange tiefling is turned round. Yeah, you know, perhaps you heard a name. The portal closes and you're all in, um, you're all up in Nordmark. Uh, Nigel, you're from around here, so if you'd like, you can make a survival check just to work out where you are. Uh, I wouldn't say from around, more like wound up here, but... More familiar than the other three. Yeah. 23. Yep. Yeah. Yep, that'll do it. Uh, you know, this is basically, uh, sort of a fairly... This is just a farmer, you know, it's just a farm not too far away from Airedale. Uh, it's going, you have actually heard it's going to be converted into a winery soon. But for now, it looks like people are just um, harvesting large amounts of uh, grass to turn into straw. I'll have you know that Morian might take care of all of the details, but life couldn't exist without Petricor, so you're welcome. What is this Petricor you keep talking about? Only the most powerful god in all of Aetos. What is Aetos? But more ends it, ends it. Aetos? I don't give Aetos, if that is what you're saying. <laughs> well, your mushroom does not know how to use this phrase. You should, te you should teach mushroom how to talk. Yes, mushroom. Repeat after me. My name is Mushroom. Try it. <laughs> Capulet is going to look around uh, for clues. Kids <laughs> these days, honestly, they don't respect their elders, Gleck. I mean, you I didn't either, but still. To grab me. <laughs> okay. Of course I did. You're a mushroom. you got to grab hey, a mushroom. Capulet. Okay, so Capulet, as you ignore Knuckle, um... <laughs> What are you actually specifically looking for? Uh, well, uh, the Modern said something about straw, so I suppose I'll look around for straw or grass. Uh, okay, I'm not going to make you roll for that yet, because... Would Capulet know how straw is made? No. Pixel doesn't okay. even know how straw is made. <laughs> well then. In that case... I mean, uh, I know it's dry grass. I just don't know the process by which it is dried on mass. Okay, that's fair, actually. Uh, just give me a straight investigation check then, please. All right, minus one. That's 11. Hey, that'll just about do it, because it beats a 10. Uh, you can see the farmers are clearly sort of cutting the grass and uh, sort of, well, literally just bundling it up to dry. It's uh, being formed into large wheels. Uh, these wheels will um, one day be taken, well, presumably be shipped elsewhere. Uh, since uh, you, well, the modern already told you that this uh, straw will be used in the construction of a large straw baboon uh, in the distant south. What if we set it on fire now? And then it could never be built in the first place, so it will never burn down. That sounds like it'd make our situation a lot worse. Oh. Oh, yeah. We'll say that's plan B un until we come up with a better plan B, and then we'll say it's plan C. And until we come up with a better plan C, <laughs> and then what we'll do is... Let what comes after C. Uh, the shore? Plan shore. 
then. God damn. All right, as you're, um, well, as Capulet's sort of looking around and you're all talking, uh, one of the farmers looks up and waves at you. I'll wave back. Oh, hey, how you doing there? She says. We are, we are a little bit bewildered, yes. <laughs> oh, I uh, didn't see you drop by. Did you just come out of nowhere? <laughs> you could say that. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Well, you know, they always say it's in the middle of nowhere around here, but I think it's nice and calm. It is pretty As, uh, calm around yeah. here. Yep, it's uh, the sun shining and, yep, you hear nothing but the sounds of birdsong and grass being cut. Uh, Capulet walks over to the woman. It's like, a, are you aware of any anomalies with your straw? Uh, anomalies? Well, it's pretty standard straw, if that's what you're asking. Is there any non-standard straw around here? No, I I hear some I hear some strange cereals growing in the Feywilds, but no portals to there have sprung up lately. Hmm. Can I like look over the straw with an Arcana check? Ah, uh, yes, you can. Give me an Arcana check, please. Okay, that's a natural twenty minus one nineteen. <laughs> Are you, are you sure okay. you're rolling d20s? You're not just putting the number 20 in. I'm sure, and I'm sure that once we get into combat, it's going to go to shit. <laughs> True. Okay. Uh, you sort of um, feel around the straw a bit, and then, yeah, you uh, actually reach one of the straw wheels, and yep, something about it feels a bit off, but you you, you just can't quite put your finger on how. Would you like some assistance, young mushroom? I am a powerful wizard. Happy the looks at Knuckle. How powerful does he look? I mean, he looks fucking powerful. Strength score of 20. Yeah. Uh, roll me insight, please, Capulet. <laughs> Knuckle, please roll me deception. Okay, I think something might be wrong with the program because that was another natural 20 minus one. I think there must be at that point. There has to... Okay, let's see. Okay, natural 20, natural 20, 12, 2, 20, 19, 20. I'm just going to restart the program just in case. Well, regardless, I've beaten it uh, with a 21. <laughs> okay, you hide that you're competent and seem incompetent. <laughs> yeah, this is actually the vibe you get, Capulet. Clearly this powerful wizard is um, hiding, be hiding under the... Um, Guys of a simple thug. Papula just pats the wheel uh, that was standing out. I'm just like, um, well, we should probably take this one with us for further investigation. All right. I lift it up. Okay. Anyone who wants to can roll me Arcana. Oh, I'd love to roll Arcana. I've got advantage on those. <laughs> Where? Yeah. It's because I'm a fighter. That's not even a lie. It's because I'm a fighter <laughs> that I have advantage <laughs> on Arcana checks. Okay, that's a six. Uh, I am carved with a rune. I have a rune on me uh, that glows. It is which rune is it? It's the I think it might be the cloud giant. Rune. No, that's the one that lets me see the future. Uh, it is. The storm room, and it gives me advantage on Arcana checks. Oh, because you're a rune, yeah, yeah, that yeah. tracks. It doesn't help for that's the fact that I like, rolled like utter dog shit. Um, <laughs> so that's an eleven. It's gonna. Anyone else rolling? Uh, not for Arcana, no. Didn't roll high enough to matter. <laughs> I'll give me the number anyway. Five. You tried. Eight. And that's what counts. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, no one rolled higher than Knuckles 11, is that right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So Knuckle, with your 11, 
it occurs to you that you're actually tr supposed to be trying to work out what happened. And, you know, maybe if the straw's not there, it might break time more. But maybe if the straw is there, instead of where it was, time will break less somehow. It's really 50 50 when you think about it. You see, young mushroom, the problem is if we move the straw around, we are messing with the ripples in the space time continuum that will balloon outwards, not unlike a butterfly's wings. So, do you propose that we stake out and follow the straw? I think that makes sense, yes. I could do with a stake. <laughs> Black is excellent follower. We will not lose any straw. Uh, so, um, uh, yeah. why are you all um, sort of poking at the straw? I mean, it, is it soft straw? We were told to by an angel. The farmer shrugs and says, Yeah, actually, there's a lot of that going around. Had some uh, people just spoke to an angel and started carving a load of runes up north. Wait, wait, kind of northeast from here. What? Yeah, strange stuff. That I'm kind of worried about them. They don't seem to be getting much sleep. That doesn't sound good. That could have been mentioned on your list of anomalies. <laughs> well, that's perfectly normal around here. You know, ancient magic, all sorts. Do you think we should go and check out these rune carvers? I'm a something of a rune carver myself. Well, I don't think they have anything to do with straw. No, probably not. Maybe we should look at the straw. But you know what they say, though? A watch straw never straws. So I'm going to not look at it. I'll turn around. Okay. Uh-uh. <laughs> Okay, if anyone uh, is still looking at the straw, please roll me a nature check. Now that I like. Nature is wisdom, right? Yeah, nature's wisdom. Yeah, it's int, actually. Uh, actually, no, since you're actually trying to sort of intuit something, I'm going to say you can use wisdom. Oh, even better for me then. Um, uh, doesn't change much for me. Uh, is this plant lore? Yes, yes, it is. I get to add an expertise die. Nice. Ooh, that and 5B is... mechanics at last. 28. That is all right. You're going to roll a natural. Oh, never mind. Two. <laughs> <laughs> Who said they got a 28? Yep. Uh, Glack. Can I just use guidance and add to that? I believe guidance grants advantage, doesn't it? But yep, you can. That's if you'd like to roll again. Four. Oh, okay. My mistake. Yep. Go ahead, I guess, Greg. Add that d4. Oh, well, I'm rolling a d4. Awesome. Um, I wasn't expecting a d4. I need to find it in my list of dice. Okay. There it is. And our survey says two. Exactly 30 is the to the end result. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, so, a uh, capulet. You look at the, uh, you carefully look at the straw, and you realise the um, sort of the plants you're getting a strange vibe from, or the straw you're getting a strange vibe from before, is actually clearly a very different species of grass to the rest of the what's been cut for the rest of it. The pattern suggests it probably was rolled up um, with the rest of the straw, so it must have been growing there somehow. Look, uh, you have uh, somehow understood this so well. It's Pretty much impossibly well. <laughs> a number of deductions bounce through your head. Straw is made from grass. A straw figure is um, a hypothetical figure used for rhetorical arguments. Rhetoric? Words? Words are spoken often in cities. The pla a place of discourse. Perhaps what, while there's something unusual about the straw, Perhaps you can actually find answers back in the city you are in before. This makes sense because... Mm, Modron want us to find what was strange about straw so that we can go back and fix the strange thing and then... and then we can set fire. What's strange about it is that it's different from all the others. 
Black think we need to go back somehow. And as you say this, Gleck, a um, yep, a s- smoke starts to form in the air, causing uh, the farmer to just jump backwards in shock. Well, that's odd. Oh, a portal. This one to the Feywild. I half actually wanted to try tasting that corn, but she's drowned out as uh, the Modron just uh, shows up, gives you a thumbs up and steps to the side and just waves an arm around and what do you know it a portal right back to the uh, square you're in before happy that hops through i would like to go through the portal yep anyone else uh, going is it, does anyone want to do anything <laughs> or are they just hopping straight through again i'm going straight through wait is the, has the farmer got any food on her uh, roll me perception, please. Okay. As is appropriate uh, for a character. Oh. Uh, yeah, she's actually got... Um, you can actually smell... Has something happened? No? Oh, right. Oh, sorry. Catch said in chat that she hasn't had... Not- but, sorry, they haven't had notifications. Sorry, I was remembering the... Uh, for an answer for piece, uh, an NPC there. Uh, but yeah, the farmer, who I was actually going to be talking about just then, uh, has a uh, sort of a... is actually holding a sandwich. Excellent. I would like to intimidate her into giving me the sandwich, because I'm hungry. Uh, hey, you're looking at me mighty strange. I'm awful hungry. And you're I would appreciate please. it if you could give me... Your sandwich. Yeah. That is a 28. She uh, just recalls and fear and holds the sandwich. Uh, just take it. Uh... Thank you. Wait, that is very you kind. Are you a fay? You owe me a favor now, don't you? I am not a fay. No. Why are you going through? You sure? Because fay go through portals. I'm a wizard. Wizards go through portals. And I step through the portal. <laughs> uh,. I don't know, if you turn around, I kind of want Capula to be looking at what you've just done. And can yeah. Capula make an intimidation check? Okay, what to, are you making an intimidation check for? To intimidate Knuckle into giving the sandwich back. I don't think that's yeah. going to work. I have plus 10 in intimidation. I'm an expert in it. <laughs> and I'm very, very well. <laughs> Roll anyway. I want to see I'm... how this goes. Yeah, Capulet's going to turn uh, her fist into a battle axe. And all right, let's see. That is plus. Yep. Uh, Knuckle, uh, could I have an in an insight check, please? Insight. I have advantage on. Amazing. My storm giant rune. No, thanks to the other rune, cloud giant, one that lets me see the future. Shit. Did I have inspiration? Uh, yes, you did. Okay, gonna use that. <laughs> Okay, that's much but... better. Well, it's my turn to do a natural 20. Uh, and hang on, because it's a weapon display, I also get an expertise die. Ooh, add that so expertise that die. Is 22 plus 1. 23. Okay, can you beat a 23, Knuckle? About 20 on insight, but... Yep, uh... That mushroom looks terrifying, Knuckle. I will activate my giant's might. To make myself look larger. <laughs> Does this affect her um, insight? Uh, it doesn't, but I am uh, now just huge. Uh, yeah. Large, not huge. <laughs> okay. You look up at one knuckle, you've looked up at them all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're now giant. You have a sandwich. There's a portal in front of you. There's a very scared farmer who took the sandwich off. There's a very angry mushroom before you. You still going to go through the portal? Yes. Because I frankly don't believe my insight score should matter when it comes to how afraid I am. Something two feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually fair. My inability mm. to read the room is probably not. <laughs> mm. While this is going on, I'm walking up to the farmer and 
I've picked some rations out of my pack and I just shove them into their chest in a oh, apologize. Uh, thank you. Uh, what do you say your name was? Nigel. Sorry uh, about Nigel. this. Hey, don't worry. Just a typical encounter with the Fae or, a, you know, you seen that dragonborn who's been around uh, building fortresses? Such a snob. Yeah, rumor is she's quite snooty. Oh my god, Mr. Bloom. <laughs> <laughs> well, well yeah, all dragonborns have a snoot. <laughs> yep. Are uh, you headed off now then, Nigel, or are you going to do anything else? I'm headed to the portal. Yep. Uh, so as you all head through the portal, you find yourself back in the square. Although something looks a bit different. Uh, what's everyone's passive uh, perception? Big. Uh, bum, bum, bum. Nine. If I could have an... 14. 21. 18. Okay. I think Lek and um, Nigel, you're both going to notice this first uh the first thing you notice is um the uh, blonde cleric it seems to be missing the second thing you notice is that the um orange tiefling seems to have moved she's staring at you all is another person that can help us with mystery yes hello person <laughs> is she holding a shovel still and is there a fresh patch uh, a fresh patch of dug up ground <laughs> <laughs> uh, she appears to have uh, stuck her shovel in the ground and there's not any as far as you can tell no she has not dug any graves <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. oh hey there I'm grounded oh wait uh, you wait what <laughs> uh, aren't you uh B's friends the uh, mushroom I'm not a friend to anyone here oh uh, that's that's too bad. Uh, so, uh, what's going on? Uh, Black Black is is confused. You your name grounded. Yep. Not start. Uh, I'm grounded. Have you you? Sorry, that 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 turned me around for a moment. Um, have you ever been maybe? A flying ship? No. A you Capulet. would remember it. As you're, well, you're the only local around here, so could you roll me... <laughs> history. Four. You think Fee might have mentioned um, Grounded, but you can't remember what they said. Oh. You're the annoying one. No, that's not a very nice thing to say. I'm not that annoying. Or maybe I am. And she starts strolling forwards. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, it looks like uh, time's shattered around here and things are, things are a mess. You guys trying to fix that? That is plan, yes. Huh. Yep. That sounds like a good plan. Um... Wait, uh, actually, I think I found something that might help. If it's a cleric corpse. <laughs> Do you say this out loud? No. <laughs> I can't believe you think Grounded would murder Lisa. <laughs> It'd be the other way around of it. Exactly. Whatever you think might help. I'm gonna probably okay. get back to. Oh, yep, yeah, okay. Here it is. And she just holds out her hand. Are you approaching her, uh, Nigel? Uh, yes. Roll me insight as you approach. 18. Okay, good. As you approach, uh, something strikes you as a bit odd about her posture. The, uh, the tiefling you saw before. Yeah, uh, it sort of hits you. The tiefling you saw before, 
she was, well, built different. She had sort of, she was quite heavily muscled, had sort of a dancer's build, so it was lying quite flat, but yep, she had those muscles that were letting her shovel. Uh, this orange tiefling looks very similar, but she's quite lean. Uh, as you look at her hands, you also notice that they're very sort of um, callous-free and soft. Not the kind of hands of someone who does a lot of uh, work with a shovel or generally works with their hands. And the third thing you notice is that she's actually drawing her hand back for an attack, which, because you passed the insight check, is not going to be at advantage. And I cast Word of Radiance. Uh, that depends. What does Word of Radiance do? It's just a small damage cantrip. And okay. I'll just say, stay your hand there, if I can. Yeah, I'm going to say she uh, started attacking as um, you approached, so you're not going to have time to react to it. If you maybe rolled above a 20, I'd have uh, allowed you to maybe try and counterattack instead, but she's going to get this attack in, I'm afraid. All right. Okay, does a 18 hit? That is my AC, so... Okay. As she draws her arm back... Please re-roll that. I have a reaction. Okay. I'm going to use my runic shield, and as the attack comes in, basically, there's these runes that appear in the air, glowing, uh, to throw off her aim, hopefully. Yep. You know, she says, I actually have a mentor who uh, told me uh, there was something you're supposed to say in situations like this. Hey... Um, I rolled slightly higher there, so Bugger. I'm... <laughs> yeah. It's still an 18 to hit, I'm afraid. Uh... Oh, yeah. Sorry. And she thrusts a large purple etheral blade into your front. Well, Four. I tried. Seven points of psychic damage. Oh, no. I will... I'm sorry, but um, the grounded of this um, universe is currently indisposed. What? I KO'd her, you cretin. How did you take out a whole ship? <laughs> I... Uh, you there, pirate with my blade in his front. Do you have nothing to add here? I am very confused, and I am not happy. Yes, that's fair. Oh well, I'm just gonna try and kill you. Is that okay? I'm gonna have to try and stop you, and I will, um... Cast Command. Okay. I'll, yeah, okay, I'll let you do this uh, before we roll initiative. Um, that's a will save, isn't it? Uh believe what what i say will save it's a uh, wisdom wisdom save yeah they gotta beat 16. that is a six so uh what's your command gravel <laughs> the best okay <laughs> yeah okay so she uh instantly dissipates the blaze and crouches Okay, yep, sorry, that was unfair, that was unfair. But look, I had a good reason to kill you. I think my word for it. Be. Well, uh, someone needs to die. That I need to could test be something. arranged. <laughs> I think it could. And he cracks his knuckles and asks. Why does someone need to die? And you better give us a good reason, or that someone might be you. Using thaumaturgy <laughs> to just sound more intimidating. Okay, roll me intimidation, please. Can I assist to give Nigel advantage? Absolutely. Just going to crack Knuckles. my knuckles as well, yeah. but yeah. that's it. Nothing else. Yeah. So I'm going to just be behind Nigel. Nice. Yeah, that'll do it. Okay, 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 okay. 
Now look, it appears we got off on the wrong foot. It, it's simple. It seems um, in situation, in certain situations, individuals can glitch out. I wish to observe this phenomenon to gather data. For what it's what? worth, I would have been perfectly happy if I were to die and experience it firsthand. It appears one of the most reliable ways to induce it is to simply reduce um, someone to the point. Uh, have you heard the term hit point? It's an no. abstraction used in some uh, academic circles. Yeah, uh, hit point is the point I use to start with, yes? Uh, he, yes, young dragon. Yes, it is. <laughs> well, Nigel's just been stabbed, and he's going to say, I'm going to hit the point of my mace on your head, and we're going to test your little theory. <laughs> okay. Roll me attack at advantage, because yes. she's prone. Uh, question. Is the sword that Nigel was stabbed with a spell, or is it like a weapon? Uh, basically, it's uh, this um, iteration of Grounded is a um, soul knife, so it was basically just a blade of um, psychic energy. I rolled a 13 and then used my inspiration and got a natural 20. Nice. What's yes. that? Oh, what's the total? One sec. Oh, yeah, to answer your question. Damage. Yep. 12. Okay, 12 points of damage. Yep, you crack it down on her head and she just screams in pain. Oh, I, I, I thought we could talk this out. We might have been able to, but that ended when you stabbed me in the chest. Okay, everyone roll initiative. We're going into combat. Grounded question mark is up first. So Ooh, fun. Yep, she's prone in front of uh, Nigel. And as you've cracked her over the head, she smiles and says, Well, okay, if that's how we're going to do this. And like, her eyes are sort of have a glow to them, as is typical for tieflings. But you just sort of see the glow intensify slightly. And you can just sort of make out that her pupils have widened as she makes very focused eye contact with you. She has started raging. Ah. Oh. No. Ah, two can do that. That's the phrase, isn't it, Glick? Two can do that? I think it is. Yeah. So with a very wide toothy grin in that she's showing off her teeth. <laughs> Is she going to fling them? Uh... <laughs> My God. God <laughs> Take your inspiration and go. Okay, we've still got like two hours to go. Okay. So, yep, uh, she bears her teeth. And, yep, once again, draws her arms back. A uh, sword, yeah, made of uh, purple energy, just forms over her hand. And she thrusts at you again. Nigel? So the good news here is that, um... I suppose I might as well say, because you all probably know what Rage does. She's attacking recklessly, giving her advantage. The good news is this is running off her strength score instead of her dexterity, so the two hits not going to be absurd. <laughs> I was wondering how you would get around that. Yeah, that's basically how um, rogue barbarian <laughs> builds go, go. You can basically um, use reckless attacks with strength and get most of the advantages of advantage still. Because yep. sneak attack doesn't actually specify you need to use finesse, just that the weapon has finesse. Yep. So, yep, yeah, this is only going to be a plus five to hit. Albert with advantage. There's a 24 hit. Yes. Okay. Let me just double check how much sneak attack damage she has. Hmm. 
You know, it's quite embarrassing. I just can't remember this. Oh, wait, here we are. It's written in the uh, Psychic Blade stat block. 66. Plus the blade's damage. Stab through the heart and grant it's to blame. Fee thinks she is less lame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if uh, if Fee was unfrozen, they'd think Grant it looks very cool right now. The good news is, though, there's not going to be any uh, ability modifier added because he doesn't have a strength modifier. Ooh, even as a DM, I love rolling these. Uh, that is 21 points of psychic damage. How are you doing? Oh, no. Could be better. Yep. And then as she uh, sort of, just you know, just wrenches this psychic blade through your body, it just sort of passes through. You feel a bit of resistance and a lot of pain as it, you know, sort of swipes through. But it's somewhat intangible. As uh, she then um, forms another dagger in her other hand, for a minute she thinks she's going to go in for another stab, but instead she uh, sort of um, flings it just off to the side. I knew it! Uh, just winks, and she uh, she just, yeah, she's where the dagger is now. About 20 feet from everyone else. Oh, well, I suppose if you're... Well, I well, sort of assume you're clustered in the crowd, so she's about... Uh, 25 feet away from you all. Anyway, Nigel, uh, you're up next. And after Nigel, will be Black. Alright, uh, so Psychic Play doesn't do physical damage, so there's not, like, a hole in my chest or vest no basically you just felt your mind overwhelmed overwhelmed by the sensation of being stabbed oh i had a line about damaging my favorite vest now i don't get to use it <laughs> consider of, of her wasn't it yeah uh so they're 30 something feet away i'm going yep. to uh Let's see. Sorry. First time playing a cleric. Going to uh, cure wounds myself. Good idea. Uh, roll your healing and add that to your hit point total again. Ah, uh, minimum. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, that sucks. Oh, actually, since you're up close to ground when she stabbed you, uh, roll me an insight check, please. 22. Yep, yeah, that's good. Uh, you just sort of realise that because she was attacking so aggressively, she might be in turn be quite easy to hit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, uh, the reckless attack, we have advantage on them for this round, I think. Uh, I'm going to hop back uh, just behind until I'm a little bit more patched up because squishy cleric. And... Uh, just uh, angry face at uh, grounded and say, get that fucker. And uh, yeah, just in my turn. Yep. Uh, Gleck, you're up next then. Capulet, you'll be after Gleck. Okay, I was just uh, working out my damage numbers now, so I don't have to do that. Your turn. <laughs> hmm. Um. So, while conversation was happening, and then, you know, she did the slash, Gleck just kind of sighs, rolls her eyes. Ah, instead of helping, now we have to go murder. Fame. And he's just loading the musket. <laughs> um, uh, lines up the shot, so she's only 20 feet away, 25 feet Um. Bonus action, I'm going to use that Monster Slayer feature ability that is goes by the name of Slayer's Prey. I designate nice. a creature I see within 60 feet. Um, my first hit to this target does plus 1d6. Yep. Um, oh, yeah, and man. then I'm going to roll an attack. I have to roll an attack first. <laughs> oh yeah, of course you do. <laughs> you confuse me. I mean, if you want to give me an auto hit, that's great. 
no, no, I'll make you roll. <laughs> Remember, it's at advantage. Yep. Ad at advantage, yeah. Yeah, because she's used um, reckless attack. Okay, that's a natural 18. I believe that's a plus something. Plus 11. Yeah, I'm, I'm betting that 29 hits. <laughs> yeah, 29. How are you doing this in 5th edition? But still roll the damage. Um, oh yeah. Too powerful. Yeah, roll again. It could be a crit. That was a that was a terrible roll. I'll, I'll keep the twenty nine. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yep. I rolled uh, a natural eighteen plus eleven. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The eighteen alone okay. would have hit. But um. Yeah. When I hit. The damage. When I hit it, I can add favored foe, um, which is another d six. Um, and because I had advantage, I also get. Sneak attack, so that's another 2d6. <laughs> um, let me just make sure I've added up my d6s correctly. Um, 2d6 from sneak attack, 1 from Slayer's Prey, plus 1 from things, so it's 4d6 of extra. Yep. Okay. I'm not going to roll them all individually because no. Total that's of it. 25. Okay, 25 points of damage. And uh, I'm then going to move 20 feet um, away from her. And that will be the end of my turn. Okay, uh, she is now bloodied. Yeah, well, I'm gonna yeah. move. As you. To... Yeah. Sorry, go on. Okay. As you uh, hit her, she. Um, just gives off a scream of frustration and glares at you, uh, Gleck. <laughs> Gleck's not the one she has to worry about. Right, mm. I'm going to close the distance and with that momentum I'm building, I am going to reach her with a crushing haymaker. Okay, uh, attack with advantage, please. Uh, okay, so spend five spell oh, points. Oh, uh, she would have had resistance to the attack, by the way, because of rage. Oh, yeah, yeah. I really should check the rules on rage. <laughs> Eight. Okay, so that first one is a 23. Ah, uh, she's not bloodied then. Okay, and that second one is an... 11. Wait, uh, what's half so, of 35? Uh, 35. 22? 23? Oh, yeah, that was 25. Not 20. Okay, half Sorry, of 25. Like, what was your damage again? 25, yeah. So half, that would be 12. 12. Uh, yeah. Wait, let me just. 40. Okay. Yeah, still not quite bloody then. Sorry. Uh, go. Yeah, go ahead, Capulet. Uh, a bit okay. of senior moment there. I rolled 23. That hit. Uh, okay, let's do 76 thunder damage. Yeah. Uh, that is 32 points of damage. Yeah, as she's sort of glaring at Gleck, you just smack. Oh, you just I was looking at the wrong bonus. Not plus, it's not plus 11, it's plus 6, by the way. Okay. Still hits, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just, yeah. As uh, she's glaring at Gleck, uh, Capulet just slams into her from the side. Oh, wait. And sends her reeling. Uh, what's your total damage again, sorry? Uh, the total damage was 32 points of thunder damage. Hey, she is just up, but she's um, yep, she's bent over, panting heavily. Right, well, if she's just up, I'm going to need her to make a constitution saving throw. Okay. So this ground, it does actually have a constitution score. Oh, dear. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, that's a 17. Oh, my spell save DC is 16. Nothing happens. 
unlucky. I did actually roll a raw 60 and she had a plus one. All right. Yep. Well, uh, that's my turn. Okay. Uh, she's, uh, well, she's reeling, but she's not completely down yet. Knuckle, what do? Think I'll fix that if you don't mind. Uh, does she look like she's like basically on her last legs? Yeah, uh, Lekka just, um... And by that I mean, done... if I have a once per day thing that deals a lot of extra damage, should I not activate that right now? <laughs> I'm gonna say you should. Uh, you know what, roll me... <laughs> roll me inside. <laughs> God. Uh, would this be in, in Sartre Investigation? Medicine? Actually no, this would be medicine. Roll medicine. medicine, please. Sure. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, that is an 18. Yep, for an 18, I'm going to say uh, she's probably got seven hit points out of 63 to use an arbitrary scale. Oh. Yep, there's definitely no point mentioned. in activating the Eldritch Moor. Not Eldritch Moor, Eldritch Maul. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to run up to her and I'm going to use the guns. And by the guns, I mean my fists. Okay. Roll to uh, attack, please. At advantage. Okay. okay, plus 10 to hit. Here we go. I rolled two natural threes, so I'm going to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a 13, I'm assuming, doesn't hit. So. Uh, a 13 with. Is that with uh, stuff added to it? That's once the stuff is added to it, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. No, 13 doesn't hit. Sorry. You never know with monsters. Okay, this time, <laughs> that's 24 to hit. Yep, that hits. Okay, so I get 1d6 for the attack. An extra 1d6 because I'm big. 10 points of bludgeoning damage. Magical. That matters. And 10 points of magical bludgeoning the... damage. I invoke the... Okay. Well, you hit her with incredible force. But she just, uh, you just see her eyes flare up with a slight bit of an, with an intense bit of determination. She's still there? she uses, oh. she uses the uh, classic rogue ability, Uncanny Dodge. Oh, so she halves it again, yeah. Faster. Yeah. Well, I'll mm -hmm. do it again then. Action Surge. Uh, I, I can <laughs> roll with a punch. I've got two more. Actually, I can do a bonus action punch. I've not used a bonus action yet. I'll do that first. Okay, bonus action punch. Go ahead. Uh, that is a 25 to hit. That um, hits. And this one doesn't add the plus six. So this one's an eight points of magical bludgeoning damage. Yep, eight points. Uh, wait, does magical damage bypass rage? I uh, assume no, rage, so. rage still halves it. Rage okay. halves all piercing, slashing, bludgeoning, regardless of source. Okay, what was it again? Uh, that was 11. Okay. Yep. No, 8. 8, sorry. Uh, yeah, she's not... Yeah. She, well, she can't uncanny dodge again. So, um, there go her last two hit points. She uh, starts saying, I know how to roll that... And are you going for lethal or non-lethal? I'm going non-lethal because Knuckle is a pacifist. <laughs> In that he's passing the fist around. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, as your fist connects with her, uh, you feel a surge of energy, which just crackles around her. And as she falls, she immediately ten uh, tenses again and stands back up. Uh, oh. oh, it's what is happening. What is? And she just stands. Well, she says, as her voice sort of cracks, as a, uh, you know, it looks quite similar to. Her... Wow, my mind's completely blanky on the name of the spell. The one that makes you look sort of blurry. Blur. 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 <laughs> 
Uh, are you Indeed. thinking of a theorism, uh whereby everything gets sort of like greyed out and transparently? No, it wasn't that. I just thought that was. I just thought that was funny. <laughs> but yep, yeah, uh, she um, briefly turns into a cartoon version of herself. What on earth? Watch out! She kind of back again directly. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Yep, shuffles around a few different forms. Yep, you see a purple version of Grounded, a blue version of Grounded with um, pink birthmarks. Uh, you see a version of Grounded who's wearing a monk gi. You see a version of Grounded who uh, briefly looks like a giant ship. <laughs> and yep, then it just sort of uh, settles on a. Um... Yep. She's uh, just sort of. Um... Yes, uh, another version of Grounded. And she just blinks and says, Hmm, fascinating. I was, uh, I was afraid this might um, shun, shun me into the form of the um, version of myself I uh, restrained. But it would appear it's... Um, I'm a version of myself who um, didn't make an optimal choice. Well, yes, I just punched you. Being punched by me is not an optimal choice. No, I mean a timeline where I made unoptimal lifetime choices earlier in my life. Oh. Oh, it appears I, uh... Now, uh, my memory is, um, shortly after a null attack, I met some, uh, rather pathetic adventurers. And my mentor who encouraged me to cut their throats in their sleep. She then taught me the ways of the soul knife. I don't know what uh, your, for want of a better phrase. Uh, well, I don't have a name per se. I just go by Agent Orange. That's a silly but... name. Imagine naming yourself after an orange. Yes, <laughs> indeed. Imagine naming yourself after a sandwich. Oh, yeah. I knocked you out, so I'm meant to say something cool now. Lali La taught me a new one to say when I beat up enemies. And he dusts oh, his yes, fingers off ahead. and goes, Consider yourself fisted. Did that sound good? <laughs> she you stands there with her jaw wide open. Why are you laughing, Lali La? There's someone else associated with this party I could speak to. I have valuable information for someone who might appreciate it. Well, Lali Lala's okay. been talking to you all this time and you've been kind of ignoring her. I find that quite rude. <laughs> I don't speak rat. What? Nor do I. But I can still hear and understand <laughs> her because she's not speaking rat. Well, I'm going yeah. to cautiously uh, you, uh, and dragon and give her a little wave. Yes. This is the information. Oh, but it's simple. It would appear that if uh, an individual is uh, reduced to, um, uh, well, is a uh, would um, be knocked out or die, while this anomaly occurs, they're instead shunted to a weakened form. Uh, possibly they could force themselves, force their normal timeline to reassert itself. Possibly even they might access a stronger version of themselves. Although I don't know entirely what that would entail. Someone punch me and see what happens. I punch Knuckle. Ow! <laughs> Why'd you do it's that? Scared to do anything. <laughs> um, I, do, do you want this to be an attack roll, me? No. You know what? Yes. No. Oh, <laughs> damn it. Uh, sorry, uh, it was GM, the ads. Go on then, do an unarmed strike attack roll. Which I might add uh, is a strength yeah, check. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm just gonna put it into um, uh, into the sheet so it can do the stuff for me. Uh, rainbow dice. Okay, bad news. I was a natural eighteen <laughs> with plus Four. six. Plus six, <laughs> twenty-four. I cast shield. You don't hit. <laughs> <laughs> By which you mean you use a literal shield. No, I, I I have the spell and a shield. Oh. <laughs> I've got both. Okay, <laughs> full package. 
Yeah. Uh, while you're doing this, um, Agent Orange is uh, holding her breath and focusing. Okay, I'm just going to roll to see if this works. Um, but yeah, instead, um, she uh, just stops and uh, hyperventilates a moment. Hmm. It, it would appear it takes a bit more focus than I thought. Well, I won't be any uh, of any use to you. But, uh... Well, that's not yes. right. And I'd pick her up. You make a fine hostage. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I'm unable to resist at this moment in time. But if you wish to find uh, the grounded of this universe... Uh... Oh, I can't Is grounded of this her. universe also a ship? No, I believe she is a tiefling like myself. Although, uh, no. with different training. Power of the dead, it seems. Quite chipper. Hmm. Obnoxiously so. You should oh, probably not of, get on her worry. bad side then, because you might meet her as a dead person, you understand. <laughs> That's quite insightful, actually. I'm surprised. Well, I'm only joking. Everyone knows there's no such thing as ghosts. Of course. Oh, and don't worry about that, uh, Cleric. I told her to get snacks and she, um, brushed off at top speed. Oh, yeah! And I eat my sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, Knuckle has picked up, um, Agent Orange, aka Grounded, question mark. And, um, yep, looking around, the only thing of really that's not in grayscale right now is the, um, burning effigy. Can I see that mode of light that I saw go from it earlier? The uh, one that opened the portal, or...? Oh, it, it opened the portal. Okay, never mind. Carry on. As, as yeah, you the most of, yeah, the most of light you saw floating around was just, um... Like, just the, um... It was Modron-related. Modron. Yeah, 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 it was the Modron uh, scrying to find some actual animate humanoids to speak mm. to. But yeah, um, yeah, the uh, giant straw um, burning baboon is right there, if you want to investigate it. Mm, yes, we would. Okay, yeah. are any of you keeping an eye on Agent Orange while this is happening? I Literally have her over going... my shoulder. Okay. So uh, I saw Agent Orange uh, throw a dagger and then appear with the dagger. Can I find that dagger on them and take it from them so they can't do it again? Oh, yeah, that's a really good idea. <laughs> um, I forgot. Roll me Arcana. <laughs> she can teleport. <laughs> but can she right now? Hmm. Capulet is going to sit on Agent uh, Orange's shoulders as Agent Orange is on Knuckle's shoulders. <laughs> a small Peaceful. rat probably runs up and squeaks at you angrily <laughs> <laughs> no Lali oh, be yeah. nice it's just a small mushroom no I don't oh, yeah. know where she came from and I don't know where she's been I'm, I'm sure she's fine okay. do you have the uh, results for that arcana check um, okay. oh yeah that'll just about do it it occurs to you that the um, knives seem to dissipate as she summons them. So, um, presumably, there's no, no physical knife to take off her. Oh. Oh, there goes that plan. Yep. While you're doing this, uh, she once again starts holding her breath and uh, trying to concentrate. I'm going to thwack her on the back of the head. Ooh, I'll make this a disadvantage. Yep, nothing happens. But that was just rude. She says as you approach the burning baboon. <laughs> uh, I just apologise, you know. Not everybody like apologies. Let me not understand it. Um, Particularly one where you attack again immediately after. You should apologise for that one and then maybe it'd be okay, yes? <laughs> No, it won't be okay. Do you reckon you are, we you should are... just throw her on the flaming <laughs> baboon? But... Well, 
if what she said is true and these hit points of hers reaching zero will just turn her into another version of herself, I don't think we can get rid of her too easily. Oh, that's a good point. Black has feeling that other oh. people have also had problem getting rid of this orange person. Well, uh, if I'd have killed any of you, the same would have happened, so really there was no threat, was there? Black I thinks like there was who no I am threat. Now. <laughs> I don't know if I'd like who I'd be next. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I was just mocking her and telling her she did, yeah, she's not off the way. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> As you all approach the um, baboon, uh, you feel a strong emanation of energy coming from it. Is anyone going to keep walking? Yes. Hey. Knuckles walking, Capulet's walking. Is there, that's how that works. Any <laughs> water? Is there any water? Yes, here? but I, I'm, I'm going to maintain a 10 foot distance behind Knuckle. Hey, uh, what's that about water? I was asking if there were any large sources of water nearby. Uh, you're surrounded by snow, and the heat of the fire has caused quite a lot of it around to melt. So, yeah, I'm going to say there's probably puddles of mud and water in the area. Can I use control water to extinguish the goat? Yeah, sure. Uh, since you're spending a spell slot, I'll allow that. I don't think that's a spell slot. I think control oh, water. Oh, yeah, it's a cantrip. Yeah. Oh. You can spend Which a moment to question, do that. How much water is there? No, mm. no, control water is a fourth level spell. Yep. Oh, is it? I can, uh, yep. call, I can control a hundred foot cube of water. Nice. Yeah, that's probably that's probably enough. You can just lift the cube up and slowly dampen the flame. So, yeah, I'll allow that. Hundred foot cube with control water. Yeah, or I'm thinking of shape water. That's yeah. I'm using yeah. the fourth level spell. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a fourth level spell slot will definitely allow you to extinguish that fire. So, the fire's ended, which is good news because, um. Knuckle and Capulet, as you approach, um, yeah, you just feel a sort of an overwhelming force as the uh, universe seems to crack a, crack a bit around you. Please make me a wisdom saving throw. All right. Lek, I'm going to say you, you're you probably, since you're 10 feet behind, you're going to see this happening. Mm -hmm. So you can react. But we'll see what the results are first. And control rooms. water lasts for about 10 minutes. Oh, that's good. You can control more water if you need to. Um, was that, sorry, uh, Knuckle? I was just checking my runes. Okay, good. All right, uh, yep. Okay, no yeah, no benefit to wisdom. Let's 14. go. Natural 20. Yep, you're fine. I'm very wise. <laughs> okay, Capulet? Uh, 14. Yep, that just passes. Wait, no wait, yeah, because the fire's out, I lowered the DC to 10, so yeah, that passes quite handily. Okay, oh, thank you. Uh, so, yep. So, Glek, uh, you see the universe sort of crackle around them, uh, but they sort of shrug it off. You going to continue? Uh, yes, I will continue following them. Yep, yeah. wisdom saving throw, please. Uh, what's my wisdom save? Not bad, plus three. Thirteen. Yep, that passes. And last but not least, our uh, pirate turned firefighter. You approaching? I'm keeping an eye on... Grounded who stabbed me. And just hovering some water ominously over them. <laughs> It's not the new famous Bond movie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. She should make a sa wisdom saving for as well. Yeah, she's fine. She's also going to um, try and focus again and make a wisdom saving throw. I'm going to slap him again. Yep. Yeah, I assumed you would. So this is going to be at disadvantage. Uh, nope. The advantage is actually thwarted that. 
okay. So, uh, you approach the uh, effigy. As the fire's dying, um, whatever's happening seems to have um, dissipated a little. But uh, if anyone wants to, they can roll me an investigation check. Yep, an intelligence investigation check, please. On it. Yes. We are investigators. This is what wow. we do. <laughs> really? 19. <laughs> I have plus uh, two in investigation. <laughs> seven. Amazing. Five. Ten. <laughs> okay. Um, Master Detective Knuckle. <laughs> you and only you. <laughs> survey the area. And it occurs to you that the tendrils that are coming off it, while less intense than... um, Yeah, they were a moment ago. It seemed to have uh, sort of created actual sort of um, gouges, for want of a better word, in the air. So it seems while um, whatever damage has been, yeah, while um, the damage has stopped happening, it's still been done. I'm so going to make the going assumption to that uh, Lali La, the actual high intelligence inventor on my shoulder, is the one who spied all of this. <laughs> yes, your uh, the rat whispers this in your ear. Are you going to repeat this to the rest of the party or keep it to oh, yourself? Yeah, no, I, to I, I, I will say that out loud, basically. Okay. You'll hear Knuckle sound unusually intelligent. Well, I think God just threw shade at you, Knuckle. <laughs> it's all right. I just beat up her DM NPC. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I thought if I made, I literally buffed her up to like level fourteen to make her a challenge, and you guys took her down in a single round. Yeah, that was not high enough. Um, Bina's, Bina's we're level ten. Um, you could have got away with as high as eighteen, maybe depending on the class. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, crushing haymaker is thunder damage, so that unfortunately mm. I think bypassed your. Yeah. Rage. <laughs> Oh, I was like, to be fair, I built her as sort of a glass cannon because I was hoping she'd have a decent shot of um, sneak attacking and uh, taking someone down. I was hoping it quickly. would go one more round because I wanted, uh, I wanted to bring on the mockery that one of my runes, when I activate it, gives me resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage <laughs> for a minute. And I was like, yeah, two could play at that game. Here we go. <laughs> but it was like, nah, it's going to be one fight. <laughs> okay. I get to use the banning how this goes. Tie them up. True. Uh, yep, uh, make me a intelligent sleight of hand check. I was going to say... the default for tying things up is. Like, at least one person in the party had to have had 50 foot of hemp and rope. Yeah, Hell you'll all have it. Uh, 15. Uh, okay, uh, that will be uh, used uh, if she tries to break free. Now, was that an intelligent sleight of hand check, which is very specifically what you're supposed to roll when tying someone up? I did say that, yes. Uh, sorry, just, I just still find it pretty funny. <laughs> I rolled that right. Yep, you um, added your intelligence modifier and the your proficiency bonus for sleight of hand if you have it. Yeah. Yep, that's right then. But yeah, uh, so now you know the um, there are still deep gouges in the universe, but the uh, partially burned straw uh, baboon is right in front of you. What do? What would happen if we threw grounded into one of those gouges? To be fair, these are sort of like cracks. They're not like actual portals or anything. I'm imagining something similar to the crack in Amy Pond's wall in uh, Doctor Who. The one that she was yeah. sleep under. Yeah. Oh, so if we throw Grounded in, Grounded gets deleted from our <laughs> I was also thinking that, yes. Yes. 
Yeah. This may, it's more may like not be a... what Bree's prepped, but yes, that's, that, that is yeah. what I say will happen. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's more like um, there's like there's like a crack in the air. It may, visually, you can see it, but it makes no sense. So, yeah. So, are we supposed to repair it or destroy it? Well, your magical uh, 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 machine thing said to rebuild universe. How one turn off universe? Well, we could try and create some massive zone of negative energy that would then eat everything and turn it off and restart it. That sounds oh like wizard God. nonsense. nonsense. Uh, what's everyone's <laughs> passive um, perception, by the way? Again? Knuckle goes back in time 21. and single-handedly destroys Silver Nine. Street. <laughs> uh, 14. <laughs> no, not 14. Yes, 14. Okay. Uh, Glek, with a frankly ridiculous passive perception. Ranger. Yeah. Uh, you do actually uh, notice that the way the um, baboon's been uh, sort of woven together, it actually kind of looks like runes. Not unlike the uh, sort uh, Knuckles got carved into his um, armour and such. I point them out to Knuckle. <laughs> what if I were to change the runes? Someone give me a chisel. <laughs> but they're made of straw. Yes. But I only work <laughs> with a chisel. <laughs> oh, perhaps. Always doing. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you describe it, then maybe we can retie um, straws in a way that does not damage it, yes? All right. Give me about 10 minutes and I'll be right back with you. I would like to ritual cast Comprehend Languages. Okay. Uh, you ritual cast Comprehend Languages. And then I would like to ritual um, cast Detect Magic. Okay. And then I would like you to ritual, ritual cast Identify. <laughs> okay. So does Identify tell, tell you a spell? Does Identify tell you a spell? If uh, Yeah, I learn spells affecting it. And I also learn its properties um, or anything like that. Okay, you uh, thoroughly look over this. And yep, yeah, you uh, sort of look at the runes, you check the magic, you check the auras. You actually get an aura of uh, conjuration magic. I had to go for you only really like ritual magic because I don't have a very high intelligence. I'm not going to be attacking with my wizardry. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> Also, uh, yeah. Sorry, go on. I would, uh, I would say that, um, yeah, control water's expired by this point uh, for the time it took yeah. to do ritual spells. Oh, yeah, also to uh, read yeah. the runes, I have to touch them. Oh, uh, yep. Yeah. You touch the runes, they're still a bit warm from the fire, but they're also, you know, it's damp straw. So it's slightly warm damp straw, which is a very unpleasant uh, texture. I have an important question. Yes? Did Grounded um, get... To, like a couple of tons worth of water dropped on her head. <laughs> yes. In fact, that <laughs> prevented her from uh, trying to make any uh, wisdom saves while Knuckle was um, ritual casting. So she's only going to get, get to make one. Oh, do we need to do that as well? Mm, no, I think she's uh, actively yeah, concentrating but... to try and bring it on. Yeah, uh -huh. she's basically trying to bring herself back up to full strength. And I would oh. be actively smacking them in the back of the head every time I saw them try to do this. Okay, <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Yeah, you turned that her uh, successful 15 to a natural one. One, well done. Yes, nice. But yeah, Knuckle, uh, you uh, realize this is conjuration magic. You sort of infer from your analysis that um, perhaps the fire, some, it, someone might have done this deliberately or it might have been just some sort of bizarre accident or who knows maybe um maybe uh you know someone uh, sort of um designed this spell which just happened to also be a pattern in a you could weave out of straw and um something changed but ultimately you finally come to a conclusion 
this is a very un, this is a, a fairly um obscure spell, but it's uh, known as Dream of the Blue Veil. Oh no. Interesting. Oh, no. <laughs> now the important thing you'll know about this spell is in order to it basically allows creatures to travel between worlds. But in order to um work, it basically needs um something from the, the destination world. So somehow something from an, another world has ended up here. Somehow incorporated into this um straw baboon. And by sheer chance, it looks like the way it was uh, sort of woven has um yeah created this spell, which is um only partially works and basically broken time and space. And but what about the, the relative dimensions? We have to repair this magic, or we may never get home, Glek and Lolila. Uh, if Knuckle needs a chisel, if anybody has shape water, that actually could do it. <laughs> what about shape? Oh water? yeah, you could make it. You could make it chisel out of ice. I could probably use a knife, to be honest. I'm a rune carver, uh, and yeah, mm -hmm. so it it doesn't specify a, a specific way of doing it. So I could probably use a knife. Okay, yeah. Uh, if you'd like to try that, roll me. Proficiency. Wait, is rune carving a proficiency or? No, it doesn't even give you proficiency in in anything. It's it's kind of wild. Oh, actually, uh, I do have smith's tools from it and thieves' tools. Uh, yeah, let's make this a thieves' tool proficiency then, because it's more delicate okay. work. Yep. Uh, what uh, attribute would you like on that? Uh, we'll call this intelligence because you're basically trying to weave magic. Sounds good. Okay, so it's going to be plus six. Uh, that is, ooh, numbers 24. Oh, damn. Yeah, I rolled an 18. Nice. Okay, Knuckle. As you uh, sort of uh, interface with the runes, you sort of twist them, try to repair them, and you don't get anywhere. But something else does happen. The uh, sort of corrupting magic that was... Um, that was nearly weakening you all. Uh, seems to reverse a little for you. You get visions of a uh, another version of yourself, a powerful wizard who can read entire books. <laughs> this version of you learns much, including the very spell you just uh, identified. And while he's able to not able to actually travel to other dimensions, he is able to pull something from another dimension. You feel a slight weight on your back. Lolly lo. Uh, you hear a squeak that's... I'm still here. But what's this? Oh. <laughs> oh. Sorry, I'm just used to all weights on my back being lolly la. Uh, I, I, I'm, like, rotating, trying to grab at my back, but because my back is about okay. five foot wide <laughs> and five foot tall, I can't really <laughs> reach <Yeah>. it. <laughs> okay, everyone else... Um, yeah. You see Knuckle struggling for a moment, but uh, successfully pulling a long metal tube off his back. What is this? Knuckle, uh, you know, while of course you haven't changed in any way, you just you have a, an innate sense of what this is, and you effectively have proficiency <sighs> with it. You now have a fully loaded shotgun. Finally, a wizard with a gun. Oh. Oh. Uh, yeah, this is basically the mechanic I had planned. Like, if um, you manage to overcome <laughs> like reality warping effects like this, you get some sort of boon for the rest of the uh, session. <laughs> and Knuckles well, is a... Uh, he gets a gun. <laughs> I did not expect that, but I am not upset. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this is following the uh, rules for a shotgun. <laughs> yeah, I can get those, don't worry. Glorious. Uh, you're not going to find it on the character sheet, by the way. You will have to uh, 
Uh, yeah, I'll have to look it up. It's alright, I've got yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, so this is a, basically a modern shotgun. Uh, I think it says how much it contain, how much ammo it can have before it needing to be reloaded. Uh, yeah, two shots until it needs reloading. It's a pump action, double barrel shotgun, I'm assuming. Oh, yeah. Yep, so, uh, yep, you can fire it twice and you don't have any spare ammunition for it, I'm afraid. But So use That's those fine. two shots wisely. Yep. Uh, but, so, yep, uh, you've identified, at the very least, you can't really sort of fix whatever's happened, but you have got an idea of what might have happened with this. You hear a hum behind you, and another portal opens. Hmm. It looks like it is beyond restoring. But what's this? It would appear some sort of spell was um, activated by the burning. How to... Maybe if we finish a spell properly without destroying rooms? Hmm. Indeed. It is also possible you could try and prevent the spell from ever occurring without causing a paradox. If you were to somehow see that this was not cr made using any... Hmm. Uh, there's a sort of a humming noise as um, the uh, modron scans it. This is unusual. It does not appear to be made of anything but straw. I would like to carefully... Um, ignite just like near the bottom of, of, of at the bottom of the foot one of the feet um, and I don't want to let this get out of control I just want to see if if we reignite it will it start having effects again will, will it start making things worse alright okay. you're on the for deportation <laughs> <laughs> which is the intention Hmm? You have to burn it and you can go home. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and yeah. then once so, uh, I've got confirmed, either, either it it looks like it's about to start going, getting out of control and I just immediately extinguish it, um, or something does start happening and then I extinguish it. <laughs> okay. So I'll say uh, you start lighting it. And as it starts burning, the uh, you know the effects do actually immediately resume. Obviously, you're going to move to extinguish it, but I'll need a wisdom saving throw, please. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, it bounced out of my trigger. That's not good. I rolled a natural three for a total of six. Oh dear. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. What? Something's happening, folks. Yep. Uh, like a crack. One of the cracks just opens around your head. And you just ex flash back and experience an alternative uh, timeline. You remember living in your warren. You remember... You remember the um, overwhelming impulse you had to steal your gun. Uh, but you remember mastering it. Instead, like a good little kobold a potential future mighty dragon who knows mm -hmm. you are uh, just uh, stayed you resisted the urge to in fact you swore off weapons entirely and you just uh, industriously uh yeah you know, used your hammer to mine mine dig mine and just labor away in the warrens like everyone else uh please open the pdf i gave you oh well then <gasps> nick is gonna have to edit in sequels <laughs> Where are you going, Bree? Oh, hello. Welcome to Alternative Timeline Gleck. Uh, just to make sure this was a sort of a penalty of only the characters are all level four, but uh, while you've, you're you still the same person, uh, you've only got sort of had flashes of those memories. You mm. find realities warped around you, and you're now a monk. <gasps> oh, so that, is, that is a punishment. <laughs> you feel like um, if you could uh, somehow overcome this you might be able to return back to normal uh, you hear um, 
Yep, you hear Agent Orange snort. <laughs> well, looks like I'm not the only problem with pro person with problems around here. She uh, also attempts to focus again. The temptation to stun. <laughs> Happy work, you don't need to try. She immediately starts choking on a bit of smoke. <laughs> <laughs> Can I, um, I don't think mending would repair burns, would it? Uh, the cantrip. No, I don't think it would. It's only for like small. Oh, uh, do, I and, uh, do I successfully put that fire out? By the way. Uh, yeah, you do. It's just that the uh, energy that gets released still gets you. Mm -hmm. The Modron um, hums behind you. Hmm. I don't suppose anyone could tell me anything about the straw that this was made from. You did investigate it earlier. It's ordinary. One of the circles was made of different grass from the others. Hmm. E Perhaps this grass is the anomaly. The person mentioned that the grass they they often has uh, portals from Feywild. Hmm. What if? If we go back and just they're harvesting the wheat or the the straw or whatever for this goat or this baboon, and what if we have them just make it out of different straw, not the anomalous stuff that caused all this? Hmm. This may be useful, but on the other hand, the anomalous straw would still be present. It is better to try and re remove it entirely. From the equation. What if we burn it? Wait. As I believe was the issue in the first place, who knows what could happen. In like experience, if fire did not solve problem, is because you needed more fire at right time. Yes? Capula just yeah. crosses her arms and huffs because her oh, initial yeah. thing oh, was just to for... take the oh, go on. Yep, sorry, just for Glex information quickly. Uh, in combat, you can make one Wisdom Saver round. Out of combat, you can make her Wisdom Saver every uh, minute. Ooh, should I make a, a save then? <laughs> uh, yep, you can make one now if you like, to try and uh, sure. bring yourself out of the state. You're looking to beat a uh, DC 15. If anyone wants to, they can, of course, smack Glex on the head. To impose disadvantage. <laughs> Can't be like that. They don't need to. <laughs> um, I rolled a 12. Okay. I have to wait another minute then. Yep. Yeah, Capulet crosses her arms and huffs because her first instinct was to take away the bale of different grass from the stack. Hmm. Uh, Capulet, since you're looking at the grass, um, roll me. Uh, yep, I think an investigation check because you're just trying to put things together. Well, surely that would be an engineering check. <laughs> you know what? Sure. I was joking. I was kidding. <laughs> That's six. Okay. Yep, Capulet, you um, you're staring at the grass intensely, but you, you can't really tell anything. I mean, you can see the grass that was a uh, different. To the rest of the grass, but you don't really know what to make of it. Uh, Knuckle, I will remind you, um, you remember the key component in uh, Beyond the Blue Veil is actually something from another universe. Grass. Oh! A grass. Oh. Yeah, no, Knuckle realizes that. <laughs> the thing you need to do this spell is something from another world. That grass! What if it was that? We should go and burn that down before they put it in a goat. But maybe keep some so that we can cast it. And get out of here. That's a yeah. good enough plan as any. Hmm. Do you think it came from the Feywild? Mm, less certain about that now. No, no, no uh, such thing as fairies. If anyone wants to make an Arcana check to see if it came from the Feywild, they can. 
I'll give it a go. Actually, no, I, I, I physically don't believe in it, so I won't. Okay. <laughs> um. Yeah. Like, eleven. Okay. So, uh, you uh, reach out and touch it and take a look. Uh, you, um, it occurs to you, you don't actually know what grass from the Feywild is supposed to look like, so you weren't sure what you were actually expected to learn. But as you touch it, something feels unusual. It seems to react to you in some way, in a way that it's not reacting to anything else. Which one of us? Uh, Gleg, the one who touched it. Okay, while I'm touching it, can I try to focus on my original self form? Yes, yes, you can. Can I use that to try to maybe harness whatever's going on to uh, change back to myself? Actually, yeah, I will say for this very specific circumstance, you can have advantage on the, the will save. Hooray! Uh, plus two. You hear that, Clek? A will save. We're nearly home. <laughs> <laughs> 17 total. Wisdom. <laughs> okay, yep, that beats the 15. Uh, so, yep, uh, you um, try and focus yourself uh, and tr try and separate the, you know, the memories of your actual timeline from the ones that have been forcing their way into your head. Mm -hmm. And, yep, you feel the universe around you crack and surge. And, yep, the monk G disappears and is replaced by your normal uh, clothes. But it doesn't stop there. Uh, you flash forward a bit. You get visions of um, a mighty dragon. Powerful, fiery breath. You feel like you could um, sort of manifest this for, me for maybe three bursts of six seconds or so. So, yep. Ooh. Um... For uh, one, uh, basically, for three times for one round, you can just literally just be an adult dragon. Oh, hello. I'll say, <laughs> yeah, I'll say oh. red. <laughs> hmm. Can I. Uh, Electro is very dimension? quiet. <laughs> uh, sorry, carry on. I was going to see if I could just go Hail Mary, attempt divine intervention see if I can get some word from Morian what the hell we need to do. Okay, how does divine intervention work? As an action, you can request your deity's aid and roll percentile dice. If your roll is equal to or less than 10, your deity intervenes, and you choose the nature of the intervention. You as the Okay, uh, just roll me a d10 then. If you get a 1, I'll intervene. Oh boy. Wait, is it less than 10 you need to roll? 10%. 10 or yeah, less. Yeah. 10 or less. Yeah. I got a one. <gasps> oh, and that one. Hey. <gasps> okay. <laughs> oh, my boy. Okay. Uh, so, there's a rumble, and everything feels, you know, even colder. The uh, ash, the embers of the fire just extinguish. And, you know, some of the water actually sort of ices over as a uh, an alabaster mask manifests in front of you. I think it's pretty lazy that we're solving this with the deus ex mask, you know? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Take your inspiration and go. <laughs> yeah. Bye, Pixel. <laughs> and come back. Bye, Pixel. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's a notable gouge in one of the eyes, but the uh, intact eye looks at you. You uh, summon a god? To what end? Morian, I've been faithful to you for quite some time, and it seems this situation we're in may endanger a bit more than just this material plane. If whatever this is continues to go, it may endanger the sphere of the gods itself. So I humbly request your aid in helping us. Indeed. I can tell you where you need to go. The mask floats over to the um, 
burnt out uh, effigy. This straw. It began its life elsewhere, though it grew in this. Pl- it grew on this plane. I'm aware of it. The seed which produced it began its life from the same world that these two originated from. And it just, uh, the mask just sort of projects a glow at a uh, Glek and Knuckle. How uh, interesting. The key, the key to this mystery may simply be that you must prevent that seed from traveling in this world. Uh, thank you, Mori. And I'll bow, showing respect, holding my own alabaster mask. Mm. Happy little. Last, it's lovely to be shown due respect. <laughs> the mask says ruefully and fades away. Yeah, Cappy but curtsies. She's not big into Morian, but it's a god still. Yep. So, uh, the um, very uh, surprised Montron is just stood there blinking with its one eye. It could be winking. Now, do I make a snide joke about Petrichor or not? <laughs> no. D&D is a game of freedom. It is, but I can't think of anything funny. So I'm not going to. No. Thankfully, my comebacks are less watered down. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> <Woo. Nice. laughs> All right. So, the mo- uh, After a moment, the Modron speaks and says... I cannot think of any time where these grain from the oh and it looks down at its own portal then looks up to Glek and Knuckle there was a time when someone from your world entered this dimension and there was a time when someone from this dimension entered this one I may have made a mistake what? and with that uh, with that, a portal immediately opens in front of you. Uh, Knuckle and Orglek, you can roll history. Uh, I'm going to check my history. Oh, no shit, I'm actually all right at that one. Yeah, I'll give that one a go. Pretty easy, but this is pretty low. Great history. Just roll that behind Mike. Well, I rolled a seven, uh, so I'm, I'm not hopeful. I can't find... <laughs> uh, do I inspiration it, though? Okay. 21. Yep, don't think you need to. Uh, <laughs> Knuckle, you immediately re- see this place and recognise it. It's uh, an abandoned prison on an island. I knew uh, it. You, Glek, Lali, and the captain visited this place. Um, in fact, Thanks, you fuck, remember... I was still going back to Blades in the Dark there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, you remember uh, when you did, the captain was actually was indeed... Summoned for a portal to the um, realm of Mechanicus to uh, atone for his crimes in trespassing on the island. Are you going to walk through the portal? Yes. Let's go. I'm sure they'll find us eventually. Well, we uh, we will be trespassing again. It will be it will be fun. Eventually, plane of law will uh, <laughs> intervene uh, again. Yes. One thing. <laughs> It is imperative that you do not meet your pa- You two do not meet your past selves. Easy. Yep. Is everyone walking through, or does anyone want to do anything else? No, I'll walk through. Okay. Are there any suspiciously grounded-sized tears in reality nearby? <laughs> nope. Uh, I'm going to say uh, Agent Orange is still being held by Knuckle. Presumably he's got his shotgun in the other hand. And yep. we bring her with us. <laughs> Shotgun. <laughs> Hostage. Okay. We're good. Yep. She's going to roll to try and restore her power. And I will thwack her in the head. And she, and that, you turn that into a natural two. Well done. Nice. Okay. So you step through the portal. You find yourself on the prison. Uh, the grounded is um, sort of moored nearby. And... There's no sign of the crew. Roll me perception, please. Using which sheet? That's 20. Oh. 
So, 31. <laughs> uh, 10. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. You've rolled above a 30. You've done the impossible. <laughs> I guess you I know go. exactly where we are in the dungeon. <laughs> okay. You just sort of, you know, you just... BBC Sherlock text just pops out of everything as you look around until eventually you just see a you know, patch of grass, verbal seeds. This is it. Uh, you approach the seeds. Sorry, I, Step one, discombobulation. I have to quickly <laughs> step away from, real quick. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, this means the seeds got stuck on Captain's clothes, maybe? What if we burn the seeds? Yeah. Uh, you see that um, basically there's a bit of sticky mud around, so he probably stood on the, the patch of grass. The seeds got stuck to his foot, got trod through the uh, realm of Mechanicus, and eventually ended up on the um, in the world of Atos, where they uh, grew into grass, ended up in the Baboomus effigy. And the rest is apparently recent history. Or past mm. history, or, pre or future history. You forget how it works. Wibbly wobbly. I mean, why I mean. So it's all Sarge's fault. Keith is not present, so yes, we'll bl blame his character. <laughs> he's in the chat and he is hating. <laughs> <laughs> on, this is Keith. not present I was expecting for good captain. <laughs> Well, the problem is Wait. the Sarge is already gone, so we can't stop the seeds mm. going into the, the, the what's it place, you know, the, with the boring people. Unless um, people I will, that I happens. will clarify, it's not been trodden yet. Oh. It's just controlled that high. Okay, so <laughs> a question, uh, and it is a bit cheeky, but back. while uh, Knuckle back. was doing his uh, 30 minutes of continuous rituals, would that have counted as a short rest? You know what? Yes. Warlock. <laughs> ah. <laughs> okay, Everyone well, who then. wants to can uh, who wants to can have rolled hit dice in that time. As nice. well. Uh, da 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 da. Can I cast Blight on the seeds? You certainly can. Ooh. What does Blight do again? Kills plants. Uh, drains moisture <laughs> and vitality from the target, dealing 88 necrotic damage. Uh, plant creature yeah. or magical plant has disadvantage on its saving throws and takes maximum damage possible from the spell. I'm going to assume that a normal plant also would take maximum damage. Okay. The uh, plant begins to shrivel, but then... Uh, a familiar grey comes over the area and yeah, the plant seems to have, uh, you know, nearly died, but something seems to have, have just paused everything as, you know, the waves stop moving, the grass stops blowing in the wind, the ground had stopped sl slowly floating up and down. Wait, what? It, it's, a, it's an airship, it's moored. Oh, I thought we grounded it, that we brought. No, it, it's all <laughs> floating up and down. I'm wearing flying yet. boots. <laughs> yeah, I'm not really floating up and down while holding her. Yeah, Kamila <laughs> gets the feeling that time has been paused before the 64 damage has gone through and just like stomps angrily. <laughs> Do not okay. have tantrum. Is not becoming. Oh, it's only a two-year-old. <laughs> that is true. Is is how would Michael know that? Because <laughs> it's two feet tall. You're one 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 year for every foot tall you are, which is why I <laughs> am six and a half years old. <laughs> okay. Um, you all feel an eerie present. <laughs> what? Is it knuckle a fungi? <laughs> hey. Have inspiration, bro. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'll use it on this boss that's about to attack. Mm. Oh no! So yeah, you oh, all no. feel a you all feel a chill down your spine, and realise something's behind you. Is anyone turning around? Yeah. Lolly la. 
oh. <laughs> and then I turn around. <laughs> yeah. Before you is a, um, well, it's a, a skull, more specifically, the skull of a large horse. It's floating in midair. Um, a sort of, um, God damn it. <laughs> cloaks mm -hmm. hanging from it. <laughs> and they're the only thing that's, uh, oh yeah, the only thing that seems to be moving in the wind. Is it that Welsh horse you have to yeah. ride that already? Mario Cloyd, yeah. If I recoil, I'm going to butcher all these, these pronunciations. Well, that's uh, strange. Someone is using mage hand to raise this skull up <laughs> off the ground. <laughs> uh, technically, you should roll the R and, and use the double L letter. Um, but I will forgive you for not rolling the R and using a single L because that's also valid depending on the region you're from. So. Yes, I knew that. <laughs> hey, listen, Bree is in the top 1% of Welsh learners on Do You Think? That's <laughs> true. Uh, I would venture a guess that we can read and write the language better than I can. <laughs> I will admit, yes. It's possible. <laughs> I just don't know how to pronounce it. I should probably just watch... Um, I should just do what weebs do with Japanese and watch the Farm, farm and Sam in the original. Well, shlom. Yeah. <laughs> and just start yeah. watching Poppy like, Come. But yeah. <laughs> ben thought Jeremy was about to show up behind us. <laughs> <laughs> Iglek, Iglek would like to smile, yeah. say, Hello. This, yeah. and then no. become a dragon. Ah, uh, yep. <laughs> the uh, horse head is going to roll in midair, which is basically the. Uh, Murray Twid, uh, mm -hmm. rolling its head. Okay, what right are they rolling? The shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. It pauses for a minute and says, Hello, adventurers. Here to repair time. You yes. might think this might be just fine. But hear my words. Meet my verse. I was having fun, and you're just the worst. Well, skull of a horsey, you are <laughs> the horsey. <laughs> you, look a little, you look a little horse, if I must say. This problem started by burning hay. Oh, that was hey. good. That was great. The horse, uh, the skull turns to you um, and nods. I'm going to activate big mode. Okay. Knuckle grows to a giant size. Bloop. So it is on after a burning Abe. Just before well, things this get be all fun silly. Japes? Just before things get all silly, do we have to kill this filly? <laughs> yep. Roll initiative. Initiative, initiative, initiative. Ah, I need my dice. Oh, that's four. 14 for me. 15. I guess I got lost. Sorry. He, he rolled four. four. Sorry. Pixel. Oh, well. Sorry, Capulet. Did you roll four? four? Yes. Oh, yeah. I'll roll for the horsey skull Welsh thing. Oh, wow. Pip, who, sorry, who got the 14? That was me. Uh, who was there higher after after the 14? I got 15. Okay, 15. And what did Glek get? 24, because I nat 20 that initiative. Okay. Glek, you're up first. Okay. Possibly awesome. Uh I'm a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you're a dragon. <laughs> An adult dragon. Well, an adult red dragon. I'm okay. sure you've got to that by now. Question, um, just for action economy purposes. Um, and before I actually do commit to having done that. Uh, is this a bonus action, full action? Uh, basically, it's like for that one round, it's as if you always were a dragon. Oh, right. So it's just nothing off my action economy. Nope. You 
for any free turns you want, you can just be a dragon. <laughs> Ooh, okay, excellent. He's really good boons. Excellent. How did the legendary yeah, no. actions work? Um, <laughs> no, because this because this only lasts for my turn, which means I'm not going to get legendary action. <laughs> I am, however, <laughs> going to bonus action uh, Slayer's Prey um, on Marie Cloyd. <laughs> yeah, you might need that. <laughs> you know the extra D6. Yeah. Um, do, I do, I my class, do I keep my class features? This is supposed to be deliberately sillyly broken, so yes, I'll say you can. <laughs> Sneak attack if I get it. <laughs> so I'm not gonna slay his prey because I'm gonna use the Tasha's um, yeah. I mean, steady aim thing. Okay. I mean, you uh, joke, so but um. <laughs> In a pathfinder, you can indeed do that if you use dragon shape. Awesome. Like, I, you, I, am, I, can... am I in melee distance to it first off? You don't have uh, a breath weapon. I'll it. say yes. Yes, I, you are. I do, but I don't want to use that. <laughs> oh. uh, you said yes, yeah. Yes. Awesome. In which case, I am going to use. Uh, okay, so I'm in melee distance. I steady aim, and then I uh, am. And then I use multi attack. Let me read this. The dragon can use its frightful presence and then it makes three attacks one with its bite and two with its claws. So the first thing I need from it is a DC 19 wisdom saving throw. Okay, DC 19 wisdom saving throw. Okay, it's got pretty good wisdom. <laughs> 23. Uh, yeah, that, yeah, that passes. Okay, so first attack, uh, bite, am num. I'm okay, hungry for away. horse meat. Um, so we must be at task force, right? Thank you, pardon. <laughs> Tesco's, <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, plus yeah. forty. Oh yeah. Positive roll. Uh, a seven, so twenty-one. <laughs> Do, 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 do. Oh, would you believe it's AC is actually tw no? It's that beats its <laughs> AC. <laughs> okay, one second. I'll need a slash roll. Uh, two D ten plus eight. Two D ten plus two D six for sneak attack. Plus, oh wait, that was an advantage because of steady aim. Let me oh, just yeah. roll again, just in case I get that twenty. I do not get a that twenty. <laughs> Um, plus eight. Alright, that's a total of 23 on the first attack. Nice. Now, claw attack. Uh, add advantage. So, natural 18. That second one is a natural 20, though. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, natural Let me 20. Get... Let me just double all these dice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember you only get uh, sneak attack on your first attack uh, on one attack turn. Yes. So I'm not I'm not doing all the d sixes, unfortunately. Uh, it was yeah. four d six plus eight. Twenty eight. Okay. And now it's one more. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fourteen plus fourteen. Twenty eight. Oh, oh, I'm not even sorry. Rainbow Dice, I love you. That's a natural 20 on that advantage. You allowed me steady aim. I love you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, so is that it? Hold up. Oh, wait. Yeah. Uh... Nick's uh, oh, yeah. asking me a question. Oh. Yeah, just uh, the 2d10 the... plus 2d6 is a dragon's bite anyway, even if... You didn't add Oh, attack, it's plus so... 2d6 fire damage. Okay, yeah. so there's a full of 2d6 hold up. Nice. One shot, one shot, one shot. 2d6. So the sneak attack damage was actually 8 because uh, that was fire damage on the first one. Okay. Okay, so I've got so... one more claw. No, that, would, that was an at 20, wasn't it, again? Yeah. yeah. So another 4d6 plus 8. <laughs> uh, you made me a dragon. 
CR 17 yeah. creature. <laughs> 25. <laughs> Okay, you've bloodied it on your first turn. Well done. <laughs> that, that ends my turn, and I immediately revert back into into Gleg. Um, as, as I do, like I'm already roaring, so it goes from like a proper dragon down to Gleg, who sounds less like a dragon and more like. Give <laughs> okay. some for yeah. me. <laughs> Is that the end of your turn? That is the end of my turn, yes. Okay, uh, Nigel, you're up next. What a shame, this could have been fun, but I guess it's a fight now. I gotta run. And I take a few steps back. <laughs> yes. Uh, pull out my uh, reliquary and uh, cast Summon Celestial. Ooh, spicy. And um, what does this summon? Uh. It summons, depending on my choices, a Radiant Avenger or a Radiant Defender. Okay. And um, what are you going for? Uh, that's a good question. I was thinking a uh, Defender. So, a uh, very Morian-themed Celestial Defender appears right next to the horse. Oh, and uh, the hold on. The um, horse's eyes glow, and it's going to try and counter spell. Oh no! Hey, is your spell third level or lower? No. Okay, what level is it? Fifth. Okay, it's going to make a spell casting check of DC ten plus the spell's level, so that's a DC fifteen. Spell casting checks just a uh, roll, whatever the stat is, isn't it? Yeah, whatever the ability is. Hey, so that's going to be a charisma check. Uh, that's a 12, so it's failed to counter spell Castaway. Okay, uh, Celestial Spirit, a large Celestial with an AC of uh, 18 appears right next to it with, let's see... 40, 50 health, and it is resistant to radiant, cannot be charmed, frightened, and it has multi attack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. The celestial makes a number of attacks equal to half the spell's level rounded down, so two. So it's gonna hit the horse in the face with. It's fancy radiant mace. <laughs> so good. Yep. You can have um, inspiration for all these uh, rhymes, by the way. Yay! I'm not sure how to roll the attack for this thing. Because I've never done this before. Oh. Hmm. Oh, just make a melee weapon attack, I guess. Sorry, yeah. uh, if anyone else knows how to do this. Yeah, it should just be, um, at, at, well, you should have a stat block, or it should say what its attack bonus is. Just roll um, a dice and add the number. It is... Uh, what's your Kusha? It is a Celestial Spirit. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, so this... Uh, you cast it as a 5th level spell, right? Yep. Um, so your... Radiant Mace or Radiant Bow is your spell attack modifier to hit. And then uh, the bow is 2d6 plus 2 plus 5 radiant damage. And the mace is 1d10 plus 3 plus 5 radiant damage. Uh, we will have chosen which which weapon you're using on the summon. Um, yeah, Avenger so you know. or Defender. Yeah, Defender. Okay, so the defender one is the mace, so spell attack modifier to hit, and then 1d10 mm -hmm. plus 8 radiant damage, and then you can choose another creature or itself within 10 feet to gain uh, 1d10 temporary hit point. 26 to hit. That hits. Okay. Oh, everyone's Sorry. rolling incredibly to hit. Yay. I've never used this spell before. Or level 10 cleric. Sorry. Uh, uh, the damage. Damage. Sorry. 
uh, spacing out. Uh, that was 1d10 plus 8. 1d10 plus 8 plus the spell's level. So yeah, here we go. Uh, 1d10 plus 8 includes the spell level. I added that bit together for you. Okay, so... 13, Radiant. Yep, very good. And then I'll do it again. Nice. And uh, I can have somebody gain uh, temporary hit points, so... I'm going to do that to myself because I'm still a little damaged from the stabbing. Yep, good plan. This might not survive to use its cool abilities. Maybe not. Just had to go last in initiative. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is a shame, I will say. 27 to hit. That hits. Yay. RIP, horsey. I just wanted to rat battle a horse, but it had to turn into a fight, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yes! So good at this! Yes, I do this thing all the time. No, you're not getting a rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> My god. Uh, eight damage. I think it rolled. Okay, eight damage. Do, do, do. It's not looking good. And, uh, I suppose that's my turn. Okay. Uh, you're up next then, Knuckle. All right, I know what to do. And I'm going to rack the shotgun and then go, <laughs> hold on to this, please, Gleck. Uh, I'm going to run right up to it. <laughs> I am going to activate my Eldritch Maul. Uh, which means my attacks now have a range of 15 feet with my fist uh, and deal an extra 1d6 force damage. Um, and I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna attack. Uh, yeah. Hey, roll that your first attack, one's, please. That first one's not gonna hit, that's a 13. On to the second one. 17? Yep, that'll hit. Thank God. Okay, so that's 3d6. Plus 6 bludgeoning. Uh, magical, if that matters. Oh no, sorry, it's 2d6 plus 6 bludgeoning and 1d6 force damage. Um, so, 16 bludgeoning and 1 force damage. Uh, is it magical bludgeoning, did you say? Uh, yes, magical bludgeoning and magical force. Okay. Uh, and then I will action search and do it again. Okay, how much damage was that in total, sorry? So that was in total uh, 17 damage. Okay, 17 damage. It is not looking good at all. I think so. Okay, that's an 18 to hit. That, that hits. So that's... Uh, 6, 14 magical bludgeoning and 2 force. Okay. So it's 16. Okay. And then one last one. I'm going to stop you there because oh. that smashes through its skull. And it just uh, cracks and it fades. As it fades away, you hear. Mm. Before I could even move, I have nothing. Farewell. My captain is orange, but you taste my silver. Don't mess with Knuckle, or you'll... Oh. <laughs> Fun fact, there is no yep. word in the English language that rhymes with silver or orange. Yep. <laughs> so technically you could argue that they both rhyme with each other. Uh, I mean, imperfect rhymes exist. Yes, you know, you just... we're not messing with that. We're, we're professionals here. <laughs> uh, Wilbur, rounds with silver, like me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, and as the um, Mary Clune uh, fades away, I suppose you could argue it's pronounced your Mary Clune if you want to use a definite article. Mm. But yep, uh, color returns to the world, and uh, Capulet. 
you see the plant you turned away from to see this giant horse thing that everyone just completely annihilated. <laughs> including, like, briefly turning into a dragon. Um, you turn back and you see the plant you um, set out to kill is now dying. So in the future, withering away. is there, like, a hole in one of these walls? <laughs> because... Capulet is angry that she didn't even get to throw a single punch. <laughs> I, I mean, it's a yeah. ruin, like, so, yeah, it's not exactly in good condition. Yeah. Is going to um, use Storm Kick on one of the walls angrily. <laughs> yeah. You know what? You can uh, kick one of the ropes on the ground, Ed, and... Yeah. Uh, for the Pathfinder cam campaign, you've got one of the, one of the ropes, um, sort of fastenings is damaged. <laughs> Obviously, the redundancies, but that's a thing now. I see if you hit instantly, flash your open space you're choosing adjacent to the target, dealing bludgeoning damage equal to 1d6 plus your spell casting modifier. Okay, so that's five damage plus 3d8 thunder damage. That's 16, it's 21 plus 68 lightning damage. <laughs> Yeah, that's, so that's a twenty-one plus thirty-two. Yeah, Lilac got very confused, and, but just blame Knuckle. <laughs> as, the, um, <laughs> as the horse is fading, I was gonna just uh, offer it a, a snack, as is the custom for the whole thing, anyways. Uh, <laughs> you had to go a little too soon. Here's a snack for the road, you rhyming loon. I <laughs> appreciate. <laughs> 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 I appreciate the courtesy. Thank you for not doing me dirty. <laughs> and with that, it fades away. And, um, yep. Three portals open. One uh, leads to Karaki and appears to be positioned just above uh, Fee's head. Another appears to lead to the grounded. Uh, not the grounded right next to you, but the uh, one in uh, Glecken. Knuckles mm -hmm. present. Neither of the la ground is right next to us. Yeah. The last um, appears to um, open up into the, uh, whatever reason, the floor of the um, meat hall in the Airedale. And grounded, just, well, Agent Orange just sort of, um, um, well, a portal opens near her. And she immediately throws a knife for it and teleports away. No, and my horse that... <laughs> The last thing you see before that portal closes is a hag. She looks through the portal and goes, How <laughs> 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 did they throw the dagger while tied up? It's possible. Yeah. With the teeth. Yeah. yeah fair enough. Uh, yeah, she um, got her one of. She really. I mean, had an entire battle, so she had time to collect herself and. Then she got one of her arms free and threw really a knife. that an entire battle? It was that less was than a round. Yes. Yeah. Okay, more of a massacre. But... <laughs> and, uh, Good how they massacred my boy. I'm going to have the Celestial use his healing Sorry. touch. To... I'm I back then. Sorry, Enfys. So, uh, what are you saying? Sorry, Blue. Sorry, I was just going to have the Celestial use his healing touch just to heal me up. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm not going to make you roll for that unless you particularly want to. I'm just going to say, you know, battle's over. Your Celestial just taps you and you feel a lot better. No. Give it a bow. Say thank you. Cool. Yep, yeah, cool. Am I done here? Um, it's just that I was going to... I was getting takeaway and, uh, you know, it's going to go cold. <laughs> The Celestial was going to get takeaway. They yeah, have I am headed to a... I am headed to a pub. Actually good. Huh. I see the power of worshipping Morty. Well, I'm here till you dismiss me. Others. Yeah, I'm here till you dismiss me. Let's go have a round at the pub. Oh, sounds good. And, uh, yep, he uh, hops through the... Um, portal with you I'm going to say uh, as you come through the portal and re-emerge near the bar 
There's a very confused looking um, tassel at the bar. She uh, blinks and says, uh, someone left, this was a, uh, I turned away and this was on the bar and it's a small parcel uh, in very brightly coloured wrapping paper and there's a little tag on it that says, or Nigel, would you like to open it? Yes, I would pick it up and carefully unwrap it. Hey, it's mine. You find with respect. Yep. Yep. You open it, and inside it's a, a fairly ornate-looking box. And when you open the box, inside is a small figurine of a, sil a small silver figurine of a raven. This is a Ooh. figure of wondrous past, silver raven. It is. A I will say. It's good. I'm a Black. little bit disappointed it wasn't uh, uh, delivered by um, a Vampation baboon that just ran in <laughs> at that random person and then ran out. <laughs> that is well, how it presents totally are usually delivered. Yeah, <laughs> it totally was. It just, it's just that no one noticed Ow! because they had portals. <laughs> <laughs> so, yep. sorry, I missed. What was it? Uh, it's a figure of Wanderer's Power, Silver Raven. Basically, you can uh, use it to cast Animal Messenger for free every few days. Neat. And I will pocket the tiny figurine and order another round for everyone at the bar and the Celestial that's there for another 58 yep. minutes. Yep. Everyone cheers and uh, a good night begins. Hey, uh, Capulet, are you going to drop back on top of Fee? Yes, and from Fee's perspective, suddenly Capulet is just grumbling angrily. Oh, come on, don't be like that, Capulet. Oh, sorry, don't be like that, cop. Uh, huh? What? Was that a baboon? When did this get in my hand? Oh, it's for you, Capulet. I mean, cop. Oh, come on, it's baboon, miss. I'll call you Capulet. Cop. <laughs> and they uh, hold up a small parcel. Uh, Capulet, I guess, turns her hand into a small blade and uh, tears through whatever ribbons or wrappings might be on the parcel. Yep. You hastily uh, rip open the package and inside are the very braces of defence you were wearing a short time ago. Oh, nice. Yep. And last but not least, Knuckle and Gleck, your portal awaits. Do you return home? Yes, although I've still not found a present for Sarge. <laughs> um, I tried to turn into a dragon again. Uh, yep, you're able to do that for six seconds. Excellent, which means I've got one more use of it, and it's like, <laughs> and then I'll run, run through the portal. I fully expect to lose it when I go through the portal, but <laughs> Black is now convinced they can turn into a dragon at will. I run through as well. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we out, should just yeah. buy a candle. <laughs> it turns out that Mary Lud's name was just um, Will. You could only use it in the presence of someone called Will. <laughs> I'm gonna make a note of that on my character sheet because it could be hilarious one day. <laughs> one time you make an yeah. NPC called but, Will. Yeah, you do have one round of it left, though. Mm. I will say that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but yep, yeah, uh, you both um, land inside. Yep. For some reason, uh, you are on the uh, sort of the roof, so you just land on the floor with a bit of a flump. <laughs> but when you look up on the uh, sort of like the coffee table in the, you know, the break room is a couple of parcels, one addressed to Knuckle and one addressed to Gleck. Mm. They're fairly small, though. They're basically envelopes. I tear it open with my teeth. Hey, Knuckle, you tear it open and you find an impossibly wafer thin piece of stone. On it is a uh, small rune. Uh, yeah. But more to, more to the point. Oh, wait, no, I got this backwards. Sorry, Knuckle, you uh, tear open a fairly chunky parcel. And it's, um, well, it's a shield. 
<gasps> it's a as shield a, something of, click. Yeah, <laughs> as something of a shield connoisseur. You identify it as a sword stealer shield. Oh, and, oh, 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 I know that one. <laughs> although, although your uh, memory of runes seems to be fading a little, uh, you see that it's been imbued with a uh, rune of lesser retaliation. Ooh, fancy. This is magical. Yep. And Glek, uh, you are, are you opening your envelope? Naturally. Yep. So you find a, an impossibly wafer thin piece of stone. Imbued on it is a single rune called Weapon. I'm sorry, did we just say cold weapon? Cold weapon. As in, uh, I called the weapon to my hand. Ah, very cool. Mm, yes, that's the I point. Stroke it. <laughs> it's a cold weapon. <laughs> yep. And yep, uh, basically or as you open your gifts, a uh, another portal opens in front of you. It's sort of like a, uh, you know, a Discord call or a, well, whatever your, uh, your, uh, your um, communication software of choice. If they're in is. an airship, surely it's Skype. <laughs> My God, <laughs> you can have inspiration even though it's pointless now. Yep. I'll add uh, it to the yeah, this... I didn't get to use. Yeah. <laughs> there's a uh, just um, yep, a little port. Uh, there's several smaller portals, each showing all of you. And the uh, modern says, "Well, time seems to have stabilized. Thank you very much. Please enjoy your gifts. And more to the point, remember, we must always beware the seeds of destruction." And that's where we'll end. We'd have him to give us a uh, lecture about the perils of marijuana right at the end there, but... <laughs> but quite strange, yes. <laughs> and it could happen to your universe. Or your universe. <laughs> or yours. I hope everyone enjoyed that. That was great. That was that was fantastic. There was a wagon. <laughs> Nobody's going to believe the Glek turned into a dragon. Yep. Mm. Oh, yeah. I'll just quickly uh, reveal, since it didn't come up. Uh, Capulet, you, your boom, if you'd have got it, would have been the ability to cast Shape Water at will. Mm. And Nigel, you'll have heard ships, uh, basically, like your future ship's crew shouting advice. And you basically have a flat 25% half advantage every time you roll. Oh, you mean cool. control water at will? Uh, yeah, control water, sorry. The good one. <laughs> <laughs> you get a cantrip. You get a shotgun. And wow, I've made those character sheets like First, like five hours ago, and I've completely forgotten what they've got on them. Oh, can I look at them? I, I want to know what my yeah, one go is. Ahead. Yeah, oh, go ahead. Oh, fuck's sake. Sorry, the first yeah. line I see player crumpet. God damn it. Yes, you thought I'd forgotten the starting session, but you don't get off. No. <laughs> yeah, my theory was basically, basically Knuckles' scenario was that he, since he uh, never found his way onto an airship, he sort of uh, made a go at going straight, but more or less immediately broke his vows. That's funky. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Mm. I yeah, see yeah. Nigel is a, a cloistered scholar alchemist. Yep, uh, an mm. artificer. Basically, that creativity, you know, from uh, sort of seeing the ship and dreaming of what could happen, that that created, uh, creativity was uh, directed in other ways. So you started tinkering. I can very mm. clearly fucking tell that Capulet just turns into Fee. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Basically, her uh, spore um, grew in the sewers, and she was adopted by the Clatchers. <laughs> I thought I'd throw some existential horror in there. <laughs> <laughs> Man, my first time ever using Divine Intervention, and it works. Yeah, mm. that was amazing. 
<laughs> yeah. Good. It was good because we were running a bit short on time and uh, yes. you managed to let me uh, skip ahead like 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> of having you try and work everything out. <laughs> <laughs>